Welcome, 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 mountain bike world to the Crankworks Summer Series 2022. It's stop number one here in the beautiful Silver Star Mountain Bike Park. And we are here for the title slope style qualifier day. 30 riders vying for, well, basically everything. It's all to play for here. Conditions absolutely perfect here at Silver Star. They are playing a magical host to the Crankworks Summer Series and so excited to be here. My name is Derek Foose and I'm here with a bit of a legend in the mountain bike world, maybe the most versatile man on two wheels, Mikey Hatterer. Uh, great to be here. Great to be back at Silver Star. You know, uh, as you were talking conditions, absolutely picture perfect on the hot side cali boy like myself enjoying it but uh polar conditions to when we first saw this title slope style course a little over a year ago during the bc crankworks where i'm pretty sure we spent most of the time trying to thaw each other out rather than cool down yeah it's definitely bedded in a little bit the course is running really fast the riders absolutely loving it and the summer series absolutely delivering on on what it was designed for basically the background of this thing a few years ago you know we may have noticed we had a small uh, interruption in all of our lives and the crankwork summer series was kind of the 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 result of that where we traveled around bc as a little pod a little family still got some racing off then last year we couldn't go in whistler so we did three resorts uh with all of the regular whistler events piled on and the culmination of that was the title slope style here at Silver Star, and the riders fell in love with it. And the idea for this this summer series was born basically as a, a grassroots feeder series and a development league for mountain biking. And I, I gotta say, just being here on the ground at Silver Star right now, it is working. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I was lucky enough to walk up to tr the practice yesterday and kind of expecting to see. You know, some of those slope style tricks we saw five or six years ago, maybe some 360 whips some flip whips, basic backflip uh, variations. Within the first five minutes of walking to this track, we saw double flips, we saw cash rolls, we saw double flip variations, we saw a few worlds first that we're going to get to a little bit later, but... It's going to be a big, good one, Derek. Yeah, the future of slopestyle mountain biking is absolutely red hot, and you can't talk about the future and you can't talk about slopestyle without talking about this course. This thing, Brett Reeder, Matt McDuff, and the Silver Star Trail crew put their time, their effort, and their energy into building this, and what they have come up with is nothing short of a masterpiece. You know, absolutely. And here we got a great course preview. I'll walk you guys down the track. Starting things off, we've got this massive, 10 foot lip into a huge whale tail, having a quarter pipe out, so getting a little bit more lip. You're gonna see some big tricks off of that into a big step up. This one, kind of more of a safety trick, so riders getting to throw down maybe something they're not as comfortable with because it's a bit of less, less consequence. Into our flat drop feature. This has been one of those contentious features, a lot of interesting tricks going down. Here we've got a 12 foot rate lip super booter. Lots of huge variations on that. Into this step up into a surgeon's table. So another step up to a flat drop feature. And then riders carrying every amount of speed they can, going as fast as possible into the massive finish booter. And that's gonna wrap up their qualifying run. Well, that's gonna be it. The riders all vying for those uh, those valuable points and, and spots, you know, for the, for the top qualifier that wasn't already qualified for Whistler is gonna get it here. Uh, what I love about the Summer Series is we've got fresh faces in slope style and we've got some of the biggest names in the slope style world. You know, take us through here, Mikey, like who's here that we can expect to see throw it down? Well, you know, we've got pretty much the legends of slope style going right now. We've got none other than David Godziak. He was on the podium here last year in the cold. Nikolai Rogakin and the somewhat local by kind of Canadian hero, none other than Prince George Griffin Paulson. Yeah, now Griffin Paulson, he burst onto the scene last year. You called him earlier the unofficial rookie of the year. I love that. It totally vibes with me. He's from PG, but he is he is for sure the Canadian. He was the Canadian on the tour last year. Unfortunately, Griffin going down in practice. We're not totally sure how he's feeling, but uh, it's a suspected ankle injury at the moment. Yeah, here we're lucky enough to catch this during practice footage, and here you can see going for that 360 double down and just missing pedals and stomping the foot onto the ground. 
having some trouble. So he's at the hospital now getting checked out. Thoughts are with him, and hopefully we'll see him back ready to go for Joyride. Yeah, I really hope that we're going to see him him back in the mix. And what's so good about the Summer Series here, who's going to be this year's Griffin Paulson? Who's going to burst onto the scene and show that they've got it? You know, people have been locked down. They've built their compounds. Nobody's really seen each other for a while. So it's pretty exciting to see what this title slopestyle track is going to deliver for us both today and tomorrow. Yeah, you know, the it's kind of like we've had a two-year break in kind of rider development, people getting to see, getting to compete, and, and even travel to ride with their friends. So a lot of guys just took that time and really put their screws down and put in the work to try and get to this next level and to be able to take that time and then bring it out to this amazing title slope style course that is a world caliber level, level course, getting, getting these riders ready to possibly earn that wild card spot into Joyride. All you right. can't ask for better. Let's take a quick look at who is riding today. All right, so you see a whole bunch of young Canadians here in the top uh, top of the riders list. We've got a bit of an international who's who of young riders, really all kind of looking to make a name for themselves. And then as we go down deeper into the list, Mikey, some names that you may have seen from Innsbruck. Yeah, yeah, we've got Toby Miley. He had a great showing at the speed and style there. Ben Thompson is another young Canadian we keep hearing so much about, trains a ton. Mike Ross, that is a name you guys are going to want to remember, so keep an eye on that. Sam Pilgrim back on the start lifts, Matt Marcel Hunt, David Lieb, Bern Winkler, and then we end to the heavy hitters, the guys we see on the world tour, Tom Eisted, Hoopy, David Godziak, and the last to drop in, none other than the showman, Nikolai Rogakin. Absolutely. All right, so Silver Star, title slope style, just about to kick things off. We've got riders in the gate. The track is ready to go. The crowd is hyped. Everybody is ready for action here. Silver Star, title slope style, qualifier day, just about to kick things off. All right, well, we are heading up to the top of the course, and our first rider is going to be a young Canadian athlete. This guy put in possibly more practice laps than anybody, at least that I saw, Jacob Murray. He is in the start gate, first time in a Crankworks event, and he is so hyped. Look at the smile on this young buck's face. Yeah, Jacob, we saw him doing more practice runs at the end of practice here than pretty much anybody else, and he is hungry right now, boosting on track. Backflip, tuck on to the whale tail. Backflip, one-footed X off. Nice and boosty off that quarter pipe, taking all the pedals he can into the step up. Big cork seven, landing perfect. So styly on that. And here into the flat drop. Let's see what variation he's got. Nice 360, spinning towards his front foot there. So opposite spin for most riders. Backflip bar to late tail whip, stomping the pedals. Here we go into the surgeon's table. Suicide to one-handed bar spin up. Flat drop flip down, so difficult. One more feature and disaster for Jacob Murray. Oh no, just tucking the front in that last berm. He wanted every amount of speed he could for that finish line booter. Well, it's great to see our first rider. So, you know, he looks like he's all right, but uh, great to see just such a high level straight out of the gate. These riders guaranteed all of them are hungry, hungry, hungry for those spots. In, uh, in the Crankworks Whistler event. But look at this, going so far into that whale tail. Yeah, and that whale tail feature is such a precise feature to have to hit. The lip very tall, very steep, and the landing kind of on the flatter side. So you have to be very precise on that landing at the very beginning of your run. And here we see where it all goes wrong. He was leaning hard on that front tire, trying to get all the speed he could into the finish booter to get a full T to B, but just losing it out and more seems more disappointed than himself than, than hurt. Yeah, so Jacob Murray, he is going to reset his head. He's going to reset his body. He'll head back up. Everyone's getting two runs today, so they will get a shot. He will get another shot at it. But we here we have Simon Carr, uh, title rider. So he's probably been, uh, been able to pump a few laps out on this course here. Simon, another young Canadian athlete who's looking to make a splash on the slope style scene, looking to put himself into Griffin Paulson Sue's last year. So exciting for these young riders to be able to mix it up with the with the heroes of slope style. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's actually not a stranger to the FMB Tour. He's got a, a couple good results, currently ranked 80th, but he had a top 10 just a, back in 2017 in uh, one of the Feast Dirt Jump events. But here he is dropping in on this tidal slope style line into the first feature, Whale Tail. Big Superman seat grab, just getting it back to pedals. 
A little bit of an under flip off. Now in to the step up feature. Double tail whip. Just getting a little off centered, but he's got plenty of time to save it, get things back for this flat drop. Here you see him collecting his thoughts, making it's, sure he's going exactly the right speed for this flat drop. Yeah, it's a nice aspect of that flat drop. It's almost a break in the middle of this course where the riders can slow things down and kind of reset. Absolutely, and there we go. Another opposite 360 spin for him. Backflip, tuck no hander on the super booter into the surgeon's table. Bar spin up. 360, regular 360 down, and into the final. We're gonna have our first top to bottom, Derek. Front flip, tuck no hander, and rolls away smooth. Great run for Simon. Well, Simon in the finish with a huge smile on his face. There's this uh, kind of all-encompassing relief for these athletes when they wrap up a run. It feels so good for them to finish, and you can see how gassed he is. I think it's something that doesn't get spoken about enough in slope style is how physical this is. Okay. Yeah, here we see out of the start, you know, he took a couple pedals out of the gate, but already back on the pedals again, going into these features, getting all the speed they can. Here we see that double whip, just barely catching pedal, the 360 off the surgeon table. So a great kind of smooth safety run from the youngster. So the judges now are gonna have their, uh, have their deliberation. They've got their list of criteria that they wanna see and, and really what they're looking for, especially in the field that we've got is perfection. So, you know, there were a few aspects of Simon's run there where he was a little off, off square on landing and all of those things are gonna just chip away at that perfect score. So 61, 66 for Simon Carr. He's gonna be our first place rider, take over the hot seat and we'll see how long it holds up. We've got, uh, well, a stacked field of talent standing at the top of this title slope style here at Silver Star Resort. It's just such a fantastic place hosting Crankworks Summer Series and we go straight back up. We are gonna be non-stop action on the slope style track today. Liam Bayless, another young Canadian rider. He's just kind of setting his mind up, getting everything ready. The mental game here is something that the, the riders really need to figure out and they need to figure it out quickly because all of a sudden a lot of them have been riding dirt jump contests, smaller level slope styles, and now here we are. It's Crankworks Summer Series. We're on one of the rider favorite slope style tracks. The cameras are there, the crowds are there, and uh, the getting that head game right is absolutely critical. So we'll see how Liam Bayless performs here on run number one. Yeah, he's actually gotten uh, a top 25 at the Tom Van Stevenbergen slope last year. Here we see the back double bar, 360X off that whale tail. Here he goes into the step up. 360 down whip, super dialed perfectly to pedals. Young Canadian rider, got a host of Canadian sponsors, Forbidden, We Are One, Chromag, flat flip off the first flat drop feature. Here we go, into the super booter. Double back flip already on our second rider here. Liam, tail whip up. 360 down, one more feature for Liam Bayless. What does he have, folks? 360. Tail whip opposite, getting it back underneath, stomping his run. He's got to be stoked with that one, Derek. Yeah, this is such a great sign of things to come. Liam Bayless, clean top to bottom. And as I was saying before, those little differences, those subtleties in, in precision of landing, those are going to be what the judges are really going to make their, make their decisions based on. So another rider looking really pleased with his run, with his flow, all that. And definitely gas. It's, it's nice. Uh, we saw at the end of last season, we saw definitely the riders needing to pedal their guts out to make that last, uh, that last super booter. And today they're able to kind of cruise in, throw a couple casual pedals. And as you said, if they pedal, they only go higher. They're not going to overshoot. Yeah, here we see him sprinting into that double flip on a 12 foot lip super booter. Such a big jump, but riders go throwing down on it all day, super comfortable. And there we see the tail whip on, onto a, a whale tail feature. That's so dangerous. If you slip a pedal, you are done for your run, not able to get off the flat drop. But he was able to make it work and stomp the flat flip afterwards. So, Yeah, that was a solid run. We'll see what the judges have to say about it as they deliberate, as they go through their criteria and leave him hanging for a bit. His <laughs> nervous moments in the finish area for, uh, for Liam. 
Yeah, that flat drop up with the step up up. I mean, one of the things that made me laugh is there's like a 25 foot extension ladder leaned against it just for for, for just in case. <laughs> so it's a, it's definitely a serious feature as everything is. But I think one of the testaments again to the quality of the build, to the the time that was put into building this, is that it is is able to flow so smoothly. Not a ton of pedaling, not a ton of braking, just nice smooth flow for these riders top to bottom. So score coming in for Liam Bayless, a 70.66. So he's moving himself into the hot seat and gonna sit there anxiously as all the rest of the talent stacked up at the top has a swing at him. All right, well, iLab team rider here, Braden Barrett, hey. This, uh, this rider, well, he's, he's no stranger to Silver Star. He's a Vernon local. I remember seeing him in the pump track here last year, and he had the hugest crowd behind him as he was kind of a little bit more unknown. But Braden Baron Hay on course now. Yeah, Braden actually got to go to Whistler Joyride in 2013 and crashed on the very first feature and has not been back. So he's hoping to earn that wild card spot with that backflip tuck no hander off the start. Backflip one foot can off. One of the smaller riders out here. So he's definitely having to work that bike. Huge 360 Superman seat grab. So stylish out of Braden Barrett. Hey, Mongoose rider scrubbing all the speed he can. He's carving. Tail whip down the flat drop. Here he goes into the super booter sprinting. Backflip, tuck no hander. Nice and dialed on that landing into the surgeon's table. Big in, sorry, no foot can off. 360 down, one more feature for Braden Barrett. Hey, let's see if he can beat a 70.6. Backflip, no footed can. We don't see those very often, Derek. That's That trick really has my heart. Used to see Brandon Semenuk doing those way back in the day, and it still looks so stylish. So Braden Barrett, hey, top to bottom, another great clean run. The iLab team rider, all smiles, and uh, looking, you know, he's just really looking to put himself, as you said, back on the slope style map. He's such a talented rider, and it's great to see him here in his home uh, home area, just throwing it down in the crowd, definitely behind this guy. Yeah, you know, that's an aspect we haven't gotten to talk about yet, Derek, because this is actually the first year that we've had spectators back at a slope style here in Canada, so that's definitely gonna help. This is only qualifying day, and you can see in some of this footage, we've already got a, quite the crowd growing. It's only gonna be better tomorrow. So now it's all in the judges' hands. See if Braden, sorry, Braden Barrett Hay can best that 70.6 and earn himself that golden ticket yeah. into Red Bull Joyride. Great to hear them chatting. So here we go. Score coming in for Braden Barrett Hay, 65-3-3. So judges deciding that's good enough for second place currently. The, uh, the criteria that they're working on is so precise and so specific. Amplitude, difficulty of trick, the execution of it, all of those things coming together. And there are no rests for us today. Straight back up to the top. Max Langille, another Canadian rider, common style team. You can see him. He is hyped and ready to go. This, uh, this rider just... He just wants to put on a show for the, for the crowds out there. And he is on course. All right, Max actually top three in the Red Bull rookies this year, so he might be the kid to get that rookie of the year. There we see a backflip bar to tuck to hander and then a 360 double bar out. So already up in the degree of difficulty. Backflip toboggan, looked like he wanted another trick there. Maybe he didn't quite get the reach he wanted. Yeah, and the judges know, you know, they know they all of those things. Nothing slips past this panel, so those kind of things are definitely going to come into play on the scoring sheet today. Yeah, nice 360 clean off the flat drop. Backflip tail whip on the super booter. Perfectly to pedals, very top of the transition, getting all the speed he can into the surgeon table. Oh, getting a little back seat. Truck driver off of the surgeon's table. One more feature for Max. 360 tuck no hander. He's gonna be wanting to clean up a couple of those. You can see he missed a few of the tricks he wanted mid run, but he made it a top to bottom and he's gotta be happy with that. Yeah, for sure. De definitely looked like a moment there where we weren't quite sure if he was gonna get the hands back on the bars on that 360 tuck no hander, but he did, which I'm uh, pretty sure he's very pleased about. We are too up in the booth and all of you out in the, uh, in the crowd. So exciting to see the young rider. And you know what's great so far here, uh, Mikey, is a bunch of stuck runs in a row. It's just kind of a testament to this grassroots level of slope style and how high the level of talent is currently. Yeah, and the other big shout out for how well the riding and the course is building is the course builders, Brett Reeder and Matt McDuff. You know, really, uh, I think Nikolai said it best earlier is that 
it's a really tough course not to love. Yeah, and and that's you, you see that in the rider list. Who's here? You don't often get some of the biggest hitters in the slope style world rolling out uh, for for the smaller events, but this one has the feel of a world tour event in in a Crankworx Summer Series comp. So fantastic. So we're just waiting now for the scores of Max Langille to come in. The judges kind of ticking all their boxes, having a having a look. So right now, Liam Bayless sitting in that hot seat with the 70.66. We'll see if uh, Max's run is going to equal that or better it. it. Yeah, tense moments. These moments waiting for the scores to drop for the riders are so intense. So 60.66, Max moving into fourth position currently here on qualifier day nearly 30 riders stacked up at the top of the title slopes south course today so it's just non-stop action and the crowd absolutely loving it straight back into it our uh, first international rider nicolas terrier is a french rider you can see he's got those french flag colors and he is on course mikey yeah so he's 53rd in the FMB World Tour right now. Had a third place at Eurobike. And there we see that big, lazy under 360. And then a double truck driver off the whale tail into the step up. 360 tail whip, the far side going all the way around with it. And then it's slowing up. Riders really creeping into this flat drop feature, making sure that they don't over jump it and have all the speed going into the following. Another truck driver off the flat drop into the super booter. Huge extended 360 tuck no hander. Backflip tuck onto the surgeon's table. 360 X up down perfectly to the outside of that landing, getting all the speed into the finish jump. What does he have? Front flip out of the French rider. Perfectly stomped. You see the relief there. Big exhale and the crowd giving him his due. So Nicholas just catching the top of the transition there. Who kind of looked as if he was maybe going to be a touch short. How much speed do you sacrifice when you throw a front flip on a jump like that? Are you giving up speed into that? Actually, a front flip, from what I understand now, I'm not one that can pull off many front flips on purpose. But from what I understand from these best riders, you can actually get a little bit more distance out of a jump with less speed pulling a front flip because you're using your momentum the opposite way that the ramp takes you. So you can actually carry forward a bit more. You see it in some of the other riders when they do the, what we call the lawn dart front flips, where it almost looks like they're just trying to land on their face and tuck it around last minute. But Nicholas with a very consistent, super dialed, perfect landing on that front flip. It looked like he's saying he might have wanted to take the hands off and do a front tuck. But he's got another run to give it a go. Yeah, the tuck no handers definitely looked like something that he's pretty comfortable with. So 68-3-3 for the French rider, putting him into second. And once again, for those of you uh, who are just tuning in, and for everyone on course, everybody's getting two runs. So the best one will be the one that counts. So everybody's going to get a chance to re-rack and see if they can beat their themselves or their run before. So straight back up, Mark Diekmann, German rider. We're getting right into the international field now and mark uh well you know another one looking to make a splash on the slope style scene here yeah we saw him at uh innsbruck just a few months ago in the speed and style he had actually a really good showing there and he's at a top seven at an fmb event four there we go backflip double bar a little bit of an under flip there off the whale tail sprinting into the step up flip whip on the step up just barely missing that pedal but getting things nice and smooth judge is going to be very critical here because these points so valuable both in the FMB World Tour and for that coveted wild card. There we go. 360 off the flat drop into the super booter. Big backflip Superman. That's another one of my favorite motocross inspired tricks. Just getting up onto the surgeon's table. 360 down again. And one more feature here for the German rider, Mark Diekmann. Front flip, perfect rotation there. He's stoked. Missing that one trick onto the surgeon's table, but a full top to bottom, and he's going to be happy with that. Yeah, and I really think a lot of the riders, they're going to use this first run to just kind of lock in on themselves, make sure that they have the top to bottom, because not everybody has managed to do that many T to Bs during practice. You know, and they're trying to dial in individual features. And so to get one in with the pressure of competition, I mean, you could just hear the relief in his voice when he finished. He landed that front flip over this, the uh, super booter, or the Hollywood jump at the bottom. So great to see, again, just that level of stoke and and 
the riding level just ticking, ticking, ticking up as we get through the list. 30 riders here. Only one can be the winner at the end of the day. But it's only qualifying, Mikey. We're doing this again tomorrow with the top 15 from today. Yeah, absolutely. This is... Uh, this is I don't want to call it a warm-up because that doesn't give the credit that these riders deserve for what they're doing, but this is still just the first day of slopestyle competition here at Silver Star Bike Park. There you go. Mark Diekman coming in, 58-33. So good enough six right now. He's going to want to clean that up for run number two. Yeah, so he's going to head back up. He's going to re-rack. It looks like he's on FaceTime back with uh, with Germany, telling his parents maybe how it went. All right, well, we're going back up. we got another Canadian rider. This is Derek Priest, Vancouver rider. You see him. He's uh, at the Air Rec Center all the time and lists himself his profession as a fireworks retailer. So looking forward to seeing the wick lit and the fireworks go off for this young athlete, a local Good shredder. Good luck. And he is in the start and ready to kick off the fireworks show, Mikey. Yeah, he's dropping in. He's got that polo shirt, making sure it's all business here on track. In to the first whale tail backflip, double bar up. Oh, going very deep for Derek. Oh, no. He's going to collect himself there, going so deep on that landing. We spoke about earlier how precise you have to be, not wanting to come up short. And so we've got our medical cr crew on course right now, tending to Derek. Yeah, so we should just give you guys a little bit of a heads up. We've got the bike park patrol. We've got medical, we've got, um, medical professions, doctors, top to bottom on the course. The Silver Star Bike Park taking care of business when it comes to rider safety to make sure that everybody's well covered. We all know that it's a consequential sport, and, and it is, you know, there's a, a certain amount of risk that comes hand in hand with riding slope style. And so the, the Silver Star crew and the Crankworx Summer Series crew taking that very seriously, making sure that these riders have at least the backup for, you know, when things maybe don't go exactly right. And and we do, I think we need to talk about the precision. We keep talking about how great this course is, but it still has a speed that is needed to ride it. And if you're a little over or a little under, there, you know, it's it can be it can be hard on the body and hard on the mind to to overshoot or undershoot one of these features. Yeah, absolutely. With the the course, you know, these riders saying it's one of the largest, biggest courses some of them have ever ridden, but also some one of the safest, and that's really a, a testament to how it was built. But as you said, this is a world caliber top world caliber level course and you need to be on that level of precision if you want to make it a top to bottom safely yeah and and i think uh, mikey i'm curious to hear your take on this all right well it looks like derek is up he's going to make his way down the ladder which is really good to hear or good to see sorry and and hopefully he's going to be able to uh to to get himself up for another run and if not then we wish him the best but the mental side of of this the riders at the top of the course, they're feeling the pressure. Obviously, some of them are doing things that they, they are, you know, relatively new to because everybody wants to be in that big show in Whistler at, at Red Bull Joyride. What does the mental side of this look like for the riders? What's going on in their heads, some of these younger riders that have never been at this level before? Oh, I'm, I'm sure that these riders are, are all butterflies and, you know, a bag of angry feral cats in their head most of the time before they drop in. But, you know, some of them have taken this off-season time, like we talked about, to go, you know, when they build their compounds and train with their friends, they really know that they're doing this with the intent of competing. And so they have to get themselves in that mindset of putting together a competition run before they even show up to the competition. So hopefully a lot of these younger riders learning from, you know, the veterans of the sport like Nikolai, like David, uh, and, and really taking that to heart and knowing that maybe the first time to try your banger trick isn't during your first competition run and maybe give it a try before practice to make sure you know you've got it dialed in. So it's, it is a, probably a bit of a head game for this is their first shot at a full size slope course, their first shot to maybe get into the Super Bowl of slope style. But at the same time, they're still young kids and they're hungry and they want it bad. Oh yeah, and there's, there's no better combination than the, the skill these riders have, the, especially the young ones. They've basically got men's bodies and teenage brains. It's an ideal combo for this. They're so skilled, they're so strong, and they're, uh, they're ready to throw down. So speaking of throwing down, this young man, Chance Moore, 2021 FMBA Line of the Year Award went to him, and I can't wait to see what he's gonna do. He's another title rider. The, uh, the title team definitely coming out swinging here on their, on their home course. So, or on the namesake course as well. So Chance Moore on course right now.
Yeah, Chance super stoked. We saw that giving them horns right before he drops in, sprinting into the whale tail. Flip whip up, landed a little bit deep, but he got it. Backflip bar spin down. Again, just sprinting between these jumps, trying to get as much speed as he can. Cork seven, super perfect landing for Chance. Here he goes, slowing up into this flat drop feature. There we go, truck driver down into the super booter. Double flip from Chance, perfectly rotated. All the speed he needs. 360 whip up the surgeon, flat flip, corked flat flip off the flat drop. One more jump for Chance, what has he got? Back flip, double tail whip, just getting it underneath him. Nearly hitting the Red Bull Arch, but he is stoked, and the locals definitely giving him the props he deserves. Yeah, just dodging the Red Bull Arch there as he rode the very outside line, so definitely putting the degree of difficulty way, way up, and the execution pretty solid. Definitely the judges are going to have their work cut out for them, locking down all the scores, all the individual points. What a great run. I mean, top to bottom, that was just loaded with difficult tricks. That was absolutely insane, especially out of a, such a young rider. That 360 whip up the surgeon's table, right into the cork flat flip down. So much consequence. If just maybe a slipped pedal, maybe a slight off center, and then hear that flip double whip. Just barely getting it around, almost missing the flip and turning it into a three double whip. Yeah, he traveled so much from left to right across, like through the through the sort of flight path there. So the score to beat right now is a 70.66 from Liam Bayless. Chance Moore, the score racking up, and we are into the 80s, 82.66 for Chance Moore. So the crowd is loving it, he is hyped, and now the whole field is getting a look at what it's gonna take today to stand on the top of that box, the level just got knocked up a big notch. Chance Moore definitely taken, uh, giving himself a shot at the conversation here. But we do not rest. Max May, Maximilian, another German rider, international field, coming all the way to Vernon, up here to the Silver Star Bike Park, rallying laps of this title. And a lot of them really enjoying doing some laps in the bike park. So Maximilian May on course right now. So Max actually, not his first time in Canada. He's actually been to the Bear Claw Invitational slope style. There we can see the double whip up, backflip tuck no hander down into the step up feature. Super dialed there. Back, 360 seat grab can. Into the flat drop. Tail whip down, so difficult, such high consequence. And then into the super booter, what does he have? Backflip, tail whip, just finding pedals there. Onto the surgeon's table, truck driver up. Another tail whip down. And then one more jump for Max May. 360 double tail whip, perfectly stomped that time. Max getting a full top to bottom on run number one. You can see a big breath of, <laughs> of relief out of him there at the finish. Yeah, Chance. It's such a great, it's such a great moment when these riders cross the line, and the combination of stoke and relief, and and all those emotions just come bubbling out, and half of them are just like, wow, okay, I just did that. So it's great to see them all. And, and you talked a little bit earlier about some of the young riders being taken under the wing of the more experienced riders, some of the the bigger dogs. It's one of the great things I think about this whole series is the, getting the access for the young riders to those those more experienced riders, some of those talented riders that that have. Have they been through this? They understand what it means for to be a kid all of a sudden thrown into the limelight. So it's really good, and I think it's really important for them. And i got to give huge props to the big dogs for taking those kids under their wings because that can be a, a bit of a nerve-wracking thing when you know they're gunning for you. <laughs> yeah, they got the big guys definitely have the target on their back, and so to get them on course at the same time with these young riders and, and really, you know, the camaraderie. You heard Max just crossing the line. The first thing he says when he catches his breath is, great run chance. So the camaraderie between these slope style riders, both old and young, is something that can't be left out of the conversation. And 
Here, we're just waiting to see Max's score. There it is. All right, 76 even. So he's moving himself into second place. So Max May, the judges loving what they saw there. The variation, that's another thing that we haven't talked about. They want to see different tricks on each feature, and he definitely had that. So straight back up we go. Toby Miley, another German rider. The German slope style seems, seems like it's running pretty healthy, describing his favorite trick as the cork seven. So if it's his favorite trick in this course, pretty much uh, is going to demand one, I think, from the young buck. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more than one out of young Toby Milo. We saw a 10th place at the FMB. There we go, double whip off the start. Big backflip. Looked like he wanted another trick there, landing a little deep. But he's going to go into this step up feature. 360 whip to late bar spin. Great from him. We saw some good stuff from him in the speed and style at Innsbruck earlier this year as well. And now he's trying to earn that golden ticket into Red Bull Joyride in a few weeks' time. Tail whip down the flat drop. So much consequence into the super booter. Backflip, Superman seat grab. Tail whip up, getting the pedals. 360 down, one big berm and a big sprint to go for Toby. 360 double whip on the finish. Getting it around, Toby Miley is pumped on that run. Yeah, he is excited, man. That was top to bottom, just kind of kept us guessing. A lot of real, uh, really technical combo tricks there, which the the judges absolutely love that type of stuff. You know, we've seen it at the world level with Emilio Hansen putting together combo after combo after combo, and this is going to get it done here, I think. Look at that. So quick on that rotation, getting that 360 double whip around, getting his pedals on well before finishing the 360 rotation. Judges definitely going to reward that level of precision. And then we see some great tricks like that backflip Superman seat grab. Not just a backflip Superman, having to reach back, grab the saddle while upside down and get in the extension. Definitely going to be rewarded by the judges. We'll see where he slots in. Still the score to beat, 82.6. That's definitely, it's a high score given how early we are in the field. And I think, uh, again, we've talked about how we expected a lot of these young athletes to come out swinging. And it's, it's kind of showing now to prove itself that so many of them are hungry. They want to be on the world stage. They want to be on the Crankworks World Tour. They definitely want to be at Red Bull Joyride in Whistler. And, and for them to get to ride this one, well, it's just... I mean, it's a bit of a dream come true for a lot of these young athletes, especially some some of the Europeans who have come over here just to do this. They might go to the big white slope style after this, but pretty exciting for them to come and get to ride in these big events. So, hey, big score there coming in for Toby Miley, a 73 even. So he puts himself into third place right now with a fair few riders to go, but strong scores now as, uh, as Toby Miley into third. And, well, we're just seeing the hits keep on coming. Jan Hagman, he's just bumped inside the top 40 in the overall rankings. 39th right now, Swiss rider. The European slope style scene, you know, we're definitely seeing it kick up. There's a lot of great spots to ride. Some of the dirt jumps over there are just spectacular. But we are seeing some of those Euros saying they've never seen anything like this. Yeah, a lot of more dirt jump contests than slope. And there we see a 720 on, 360 off of the first title whale tail. Jan, front flip on the step up, just a tad short, but getting what he needs to do done, getting that rotation, already coming out swinging. If you're gonna short a jump, that's the one to do it because you can afford to lose a little bit of speed coming into that flat drop. So yeah, absolutely. Switch precision. So a little bit of 360X, then another 720 on the super booter into the surgeon's table, suicide up. 360 down, landing a little deep. He's going to want as much speed as he can here into the Showtime booter. Opposite 360 table. So some big banger tricks in that run for Jan, and then a few maybe little missteps on a couple of those jumps. You saw there, giving him the little so-so signal at the finish line, but a top-to-bottom run today is definitely something to take home. Yeah, and Jan Hagman knows that can be tighter. He can clean that up for sure. And for a lot of these riders, this first run is going to be their first chance to ride under pressure, kind of in the true heat of the moment. 720 on to that tidal whale tail. What a great way to get your run started and really grab the judges by the collar and force the attention onto you. You know, they, they kind of work on that thermometer system. The, the judges get, or the run's getting hotter, it's getting cooler. And if 
if you start your run red hot like that, then they're not going to be able to look away. And it's the same with the crowd. So Chance Moore, he's holding it down right now at the top, Max May and Toby Miley. That's your top three, but it's all, there's still quite a bit of room in there. And there are still a ton of talented athletes left on the, uh, on the start list here, Mikey. Yeah, we're not even halfway through our start list right now, and still the top score in the 80s on run number one. So this is going to heat up, as they say, in this 31 degree weather. Still waiting a little bit for the scores for Jan. And this is one of the most anxious moments outside of maybe waiting in the start gate. One of the most anxious moments for the riders when they've done their bit and left it now in the judges' hands. And they, there's nothing more they can do but just sit and wait for the, uh, for the numbers to get crunched and see. But at least in this one, they are going to get the chance to go back up. And I think for sure for Jan Hagman, he's got a few things he can tidy up in that run and probably get himself into a position where he's going to feel just a little bit more, uh, more solid, more a little happier with what he's put down. Yeah, I know there is a bit of tactics involved in riding slope style competitions because it is the best of two runs. You can kind of decide whether you want to give or go and give it everything you have on run number one and see where it places you. Or if you kind of have what we like to call a safety run, not that you know any of the things that these guys are able to do on this massive title course are safe for the average human, but maybe tricks they're a little more comfortable with, have a little bit more dial, have done you know for many years. And so they'll keep those as their, their first run, and then on run number two, they'll leave everything out on course. So there we see score for Jan Hegman coming in. 60.00, so Jan putting himself into ninth position so far. I think he's uh, kind of understands that one. He'll go back up, he'll tidy it up, and he'll put, him, put himself back into the mix and see if he can line up his banger. So Caden Ingersoll, this rider, Highland Bike Park, 17 years old. He said he grew up riding Highland Bike Park and he wanted to give a shout out to the crew there. Young, 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 but this guy is so excited. He said he's honored to be here, Mikey. Yeah, there he was with another kind of more unconventional trick with the uh, seat grab kick out to X. There we go, 360 down side whip on the step up. So the young 17 year old, good start to his run, kind of ramping things up into the flat drop. Truck driver down the flat drop, great from the youngster, great landing, plenty of speed. Flip whip, just a little bit short though on that 12 foot super booter. Tuck no hander onto the surgeon's table. Flat drop flip out on to the final berm. One more jump for Caden. 360 whip going the long way around there. Good variations out of the young rider from Maine, 17 years old pulling his first top to bottom professional slope style run. He is stoked. Yeah, and definitely the young athlete riding beyond his years. That is so impressive to see 17 year old come out, step into the pressure cooker and put it down like that. Highland Bike Park, they should, they're gonna be proud of this young rider after seeing that run. Just a top to bottom, even a top to bottom on this slope style course at the best of times is a challenging thing to do. But to, to do it in competition with essentially, I mean, I'm gonna guess this, you're amongst your heroes. Literally the guys that you've watched on TV, that you've looked up to maybe a short few years ago went and got autographs from, now you're in the same start gate as them. That's gotta be, uh, that's gotta be a surreal feeling. Yeah, you know, it, it is kind of one of those surreal moments when you're a youngster like Caden getting to going from having you know photos on your Instagram background of your favorite riders and sharing your favorite tricks to now competing against them. And here we're seeing some of the replay of his run going, starting things off with that kind of motocross and styled variation with a seat grab kick out trick to a variation with an X up and then going right into the spin trick. So that 360 down whip on the step up and then here going the other way, 360 top side whip on the finish jump, getting huge amplitude. Another aspect that we haven't talked too much about with this course being so large and so well built that the height and amplitude that these riders get is really going to come into play for the judges. Definitely. They're going to want to see the, the riders boosting and they also want to see the riders understanding which features you can really take to the moon and which ones that you're going to play within the limits of, like the whale tail. Unfortunately, you know, we saw Derek Priest going down, overshooting onto the whale tail and taking it out into the flats. That's not one that you can really mess with. But we talked about this finish jump. You can go as big as you want. The faster you go, you're not going to go that much further down the landing. You're only going to go higher and the judges love 
love that, especially if you're tossing in variations on your tricks. So 66 flat for Caden Ingersoll. That's good enough for sixth place so far. So inside the top 10 now, of course, we're only not even halfway through, or maybe just around halfway through our field. So that's not necessarily uh, an indication of where Caden's going to end up, but I would say a great debut in Crankwork Slope Style for that young athlete. So we just got to give a couple of shout outs. The Destination Silver Star and Tourism Vernon people have hooked it up for Crankworks, uh, for the Crankworks Summer Series, taking care of business top to bottom. And we're just so grateful to be here and have Silver Star in the mix in the Crankworks family. Of course, we're going out to Quebec later in the year after Whistler, early September. But right now, I mean, these shots, these aerial shots, we've had a bunch of rain early in the summer. It didn't really actually feel like summer for quite a bit of it. But what it's done is it's created this green landscape that is is just magic. It's keeping the dust down. It's keeping things, uh, the, the riding. I mean, Mikey, you've been racing in the bike park here for a couple days now. It, the riding's spectacular at the moment. Oh, you know, I, I wasn't actually planning on bringing bikes to this event. I, I was just planning on helping you out on the uh, on the microphone here. But uh, when I got a little bit earlier ride, I decided to bring my slalom bike, my pump track bike, and got to get out on the hill and, and race some more of these summer series events, which are just so much fun. It's just that grassroots vibe meets Crankworks World Tour kind of infrastructure and, and course design. And it's just been such a great place. And yeah, such a polar opposite from when we were here a little less than a year ago that I can't wait to come back with uh, my actual bike park bike and get some proper laps because the uh, slalom bike might be a little rattly on some of these <laughs> trails. Yeah, you touched on this before, Mikey, but having a crowd back on the side of the slope style course is maybe my favorite part of this whole thing. We've, we've just been seeing them from our position up here streaming in, and everybody's just so excited to be here. Last year, it was a closed course because, uh, you know, of course, things were a lot tighter than they are now. Um, and it was just, uh, it was kind of, I don't know, it felt a little weird, you know, being out, out here and watching this slope style with only just the volunteers and staff and stuff on site. So having this big crowd firing, and this is only qualifier day, we've got finals tomorrow, so I'm sure all the people that are here are going to go home or go back to their hotels or back down to Vernon to the lake and tell all their friends what a good time they had up here at Silver Star. And we're going to see the fields just full again tomorrow. The weather, I mean, it's perfect. It's a little warm, but I'd rather a little warm than a little cold. <laughs> we're not having to blowtorch ice off the course like we did in the fall. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the case. So we'll just take a quick here look at our current standings right now. We have so, on top. So Chance Moore, he put it down. And you can see, I mean, he's got a six and a half point gap down to Max May in second place. Chance Moore really raised the bar with that run. And I think he's going to be now the gold standard for anybody else who want to beat. Toby Miley, of course, you know, he's, he's I mean, sitting in third, he, anything can happen. And then as we move down, we've got a couple kind of not quite clean runs. Jacob Murray was the first man out of the gate. And then Derek Priest. We're really hoping he's okay with that big overshoot onto the uh, onto the title whale tail. That looked like a tough one. But we've seen these athletes, and it blows me away. And I know you do it for a living, Mikey, but I still, from, from this seat, I cannot believe the ability of the athletes to take a hit, get back up, and go do it again. There's, there's, it almost feels superhuman to, to watch them do it. And I know you said earlier, and I like this, learn to ride, then you got to learn to fall. Because if you don't learn to fall, you'll never learn to ride. Yeah, or you don't learn to ride for very long mm. is kind of the way I look at it. But uh, yeah, uh, and again, this kind of plays into the youth that's out here today. Some of the maybe older riders take a big slam like that, realize that they want to save themselves maybe for next weekend. But these youngsters, again, men's bodies, teenage brains, and the brain says, let's go. But back up course, we've got, who do we have here? Well, Ben Thompson, you know, he's been riding with uh, with Derek Priest. These guys are, are pushing each other up and up and up. And Ben Thompson definitely hungry. He wants he wants to be the breakout star of the Crankwork Summer Series. He's on course now. There we go with the double whip all the way up that whale tail. Double truck driver down, a little bit hung up. In to the step up feature. Backflip bar, he wanted to grab that tuck no hander, not quite getting what he wanted, but he's got another bunch of features here and as you said wanting to be the breakout currently second in the Red Bull rookie tour there another double truck off that flat drop into the super booter front flip bar to tuck no hander maybe not quite getting the extension but such a technical trick bar spin up onto the surgeon's table front flip down first one of those we've seen today into the finish line jump 
360 bar to uh, downside tail whip. Wow, absolutely amazing run from the young Canadian, Ben Thompson, throwing down. Let's be honest, that was a podium level run just two years ago at the FMB World Championship Tour, Slope Style Tour. And this is run number one qualifying of a gold wild card event. Well, there is just so much to unpack from that run. First of all, we gotta we gotta just let you guys in on what just happened. He had a flat tire right before this run and was up there stressing, stress changing his flat, and then was able to shake it off and put down that run. And that, we're looking at the replay here. If you're on the side of the course, you're not gonna be able to see it. That front flip off the surgeon's table, the consequence of that, it must feel like doing a high dive, but it's not into a pool, it's just onto concrete hard dirt. Yeah, the, the level of confidence you have to have to go, you know what, I'm gonna put my head first off of this 10 foot drop and hope that the bike comes around and meets me. And then to go into that, in to the truck driver to late downside whip, 360 bar spin, and then as he catches the handlebars, kicking that bike away the opposite direction of the spin, stopping his rotation. So much technicality that trick. And how old is this kid? Like, I don't think he's graduated high school yet. So boxes ticked there, amplitude, difficulty, uh, incredible style, all the things that we love to see in slope style, and a huge variation in the tricks. I mean, he definitely didn't repeat anything in the stuff that he did. Not only was it not a repeat in his run, we haven't seen anybody doing that. Uh, so tick, 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 all the boxes. He's doing his part, now it's up to the judges. But this young rider definitely looking like he is, uh, he is, he's on fire right now. And man, I'm just so excited about the future of Slopestyle. It's in a great place right now, but the torch has to be passed. That's just the nature of, of nature, you know. We're constantly rolling and moving forward and evolving. And this, the, the way this evolution is going is so exciting to see where these riders are gonna end up so that Judges, scores coming in a 69 even for Ben Thompson. So that's gonna put him into fifth place currently for Ben Thompson. So not having, uh, not having an impact on that top three so far, Ben Thompson, but he does have another chance. So maybe he can tidy things up and, uh, and give himself a chance to get back into the podium conversation. But no rest here for the slope style devotees. The Spanish rider, this is Marcel Durbao. It's his very first time in Canada. And his only comment was, I've never seen jumps this big. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's, he is from Spain. They do have La Palma Bike Park there with some great dirt jumps, but nothing to the level of this tidal slope style course. There we see tail whip up, backflip bar down, hanging up a little bit. There we go, 360 whip on the step up. So probably a bit more comfortable on those dirt jump style features, but here we go into the flat drop feature, something he himself, he said he has not seen before. Truck driver down though, making good work of it for his first time on a slope style because Marcel backflip Superman seat grab on the super booter into the surgeon's table. Bar spin up. 360 down, nice and smooth into the last berm and he's gonna be sprinting to get all the speed he can. What does he have? Backflip tail whip. He's stoked, top to bottom run for Marcel Dubrow. Look at the hype, he just hand over his heart. He can't believe what he's done. He's never he's never seen anything like this before. This kid's grown up dirt jumping. He's, he's certainly got great bike handling skills, but the difference between riding even La Poma, your local dirt jumps or, or, or wherever, to this, something that's built by Matt McDuff and Brett Reeder, that the, the heroes of the slope style world competed on for a world tour event only a year ago, to just make it to the bottom. I mean, you can see this kid is glowing right now. Yeah, he was he was exclaiming yes before he even was anywhere near the finish arch. As soon as he knew those tires were stuck to the dirt, he was that extreme relief. Yeah. You can just yeah, you can hear him. He's just fired up. So a little bit short on the extension on that Superman uh, backflip, but these are the kind of things that riders can look to tidy up and run to. Yeah, and we did see that in the score from the rider just a moment ago, Ben Thompson. You know, some great high-level tricks, but maybe a little bit of case, a little bit of hang up on some of those jumps, and getting a bit docked by the judges for it. So competition level already so high that the judges are having to be very, very 
uh, tight on their judging, very high level of scrutiny for these runs. Yeah, execution is everything. And while, while we can see a, a wild run that looks really spectacular, the judges, they, they see past the emotion and they know, uh, they know exactly what they're looking at and what they're looking for. So we're going to see those kinds of things are, are going to be where the judges are chipping away at those points. Um, but the riders get it too. They know the game. They know exactly where the points are earned and where the points are lost. So Marcel Durbo, his, his score coming in at a 64.00. So he's going to slot himself into ninth. And you can see he's still, you know, he's just grinning. He's still buzzing. The adrenaline flowing after that run top to bottom. He's going to go back up. He's going to get another shot at it. Even the chance to just ride this with only a few other people to not have to wait in line. It's just a magic thing for these riders. So we head straight back up where there are no rests on qualifier day. 30 riders, we got, well, 28 we got to get through. And Dorian Matcher, Austrian rider, he is here to show his, uh, well, he's looking to, to show his style on uh, the slope style course. He's stoked and he is ready to go. He is on course, the young Austrian. Yeah, he's actually the bronze medal winner earlier this year at the Burrell Bike Fest. So he's not a stranger to podiums here at slope style. Backflip, tuck, no hander, getting the extension. Wanting a tuck to bar, but not getting the hands off for the tuck no-hander. Into the step up. Flip whip, getting that around, stomping the very top of the landing. And here we go, taking that deep breath, cruising that low speed flat drop feature. 360 truck driver into the super booter. Double backflip. Going just a bit too hot, yanking on that double flip, but he slid out, hands up. He's walking around, folks. Put your hands together. The young Austrian, Dorian Macher. So that just tells us how big that jump is, that you can over-rotate a relatively slow, lofty double backflip and still over-rotate it. That thing is huge, that jump. So he's going to have to slow the rotation down even more or, uh, or maybe go a little smaller, but I'm pretty sure that that's not the answer for the young Austrian rider. So he's just going to have to lay it out. And what a, what a time to be involved in slope style when a laid out double backflip is a thing. Yeah, and in a qualifying yeah. day, mind you. So this is this is still qualifying for the gold stop to earn a wild card to joyride. First runs, and we're seeing double flips. We're seeing front flip flat drops. We're seeing flip double tail whips. Again, run one of qualifying. The level is absolutely insane. And I do have to say, some of the heavy hitters up on course that have done this for a while might be rethinking their strategy a little bit. All right, so our next rider, he is uh, basically the recipient of a world's first. This guy, he, he was out in practice today. His name is Mike Ross. He's a young Aussie, and he, uh, just in practice in the last couple of days, has put down something that nobody has ever done before. And we're looking Mikey, at it. Mikey, talk us through what, what, I mean, that was just bonkers. For, for those of us lucky enough to be uh, in view of a screen right now, you can watch Mike Ross on the surgeon's table feature here. So jumping, step up onto the feature, doing a cash roll off of a flat drop and stomping the landing. So for those who don't know, the cash roll, kind of made famous by none other than Nikolai Rogakin, is a front side 720. So you're rotating towards your front shoulder instead of backwards off the lip, not using the lip momentum. And so to be able to do that without any lip, okay. off of a flat drop feature, doing two full rotations upside down, absolutely mental. So Mike Ross dropping in right now. Unfortunately, after that little bit of a, uh, or that amazing world's first, he had a bit of a crash on track and hurt his wrist a little bit. So there, front flip on, tuck no hander off. So he actually didn't even get to ride practice today with that wrist injury. Cash, there it is, a regular cash roll on that step up. Here we go, into the flat drop. Young Australian Mike Ross. Flat backflip, perfectly dialed into the super booter. Double flip, just barely slipping a pedal, but rolling out smooth. Here we go, into cannonball up. Cash roll down, oh! And he's up on his feet, but going for it there, Mike Ross. Just a tiny bit short on his rotation there. The precision required for that. And as you said, Mike Ross dealing with a bit of a sore wrist. 30-year-old Australian rider. This guy has been through it. And he's 
just, I mean, the, the cannonball up and look at him, you know, he's setting this thing up, he tosses it and you really, it, it's a big drop, but for the amount of rotational uh, axes that he's dealing with there to throw a cash roll with no lip, it's not actually a lot of time to get it done in. No, no, it's not. And to be able to know where you are in that rotation, especially coming down off that feature, and be able to get out of it clean like that, absolutely amazing. But Mike Ross actually comes from a bit of a BMX park background, so his aerial awareness is probably better than almost anybody on track. And just getting a little word from the, from the booth that two of his good friends at home, none other than the Crankworks legend of Caroline Buchanan and her, her boyfriend uh, Prudy, who's a motocross legend, convince Mike to give up his day job as an electrician in Australia and chase his dream of a Crankworks medal, which he earned just a month ago, his first ever at Innsbruck Speed and Style. He actually went home and put up a really awesome Instagram video of the spot that he met in his garage where he wanted to hang the medal and rode it several years ago and then got to hang his medal. All right, well, we're rolling on the Swedish slope style uh, scene has just been firing lately from Martin Soderstrom on down with now, obviously, domination of Emilio Hansen. Lucas Skjold, he trains with Emil back home in Sweden, and he is here. He's sitting, he's, uh, the, you know, the, he's part of this scene that has just been blowing up out of Sweden. It seems like they all have quite a similar riding style, which luckily is pretty sick. Yeah, super technical riding from the Swedish. There you see backflip, double bar, perfect rotation. Yeah. 360 triple bar off into the step up feature. Nice opposite 360 whip there. And now catching his breath. Got to overhear Lucas earlier at the top asking the other riders how gassed they were at the finish line if they were breathing hard. And he said he could barely keep up with his breath after that run on the finish and there 360 off the flat drop into the super booter big backflip tail whip looked like maybe you wanted another variation there at the end opposite tail whip up truck driver down one more jump for lucas big lazy backflip double whip he is fired up on that run Oh, you love to see it. These riders, just the emotion comes pouring off them. The pressure's off their shoulders. They cannot believe the, where they are, what they've done, and just the feeling of relief is so incredible. It's great to see the look on these guys' faces, and Lucas skilled, no exception. The Swedish rider, he's so pumped to have put that run down. So super exciting here that we're you know, getting into the, the later part of the start list and a, truly an international field for, for what is a relatively homegrown event. It's the Summer Series Crankworks. We're here in Silver Star, but we've got a super strong field here, and it's great to see Lucas Skilled training under the wing of Emilio Hansen. And like you said, the technicality of these tricks going so far down the landing on that, uh, on that whale tail. Yeah, and still able to get the double truck out with that deep landing just shows the testament to how these riders can adapt mid-run and just make the course work to their advantage. And then here we see this finish. Look at the extension here on this flip whip. Bike doesn't look like it's gonna come around, barely finds the pedals, and he is so stoked to get that one in the bag. That kind of that kind of execution is just so stylish, and I think it's 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 some of these intangible things that all add up to a rider's style. Those those little those little details, you know, even just doing it so slow so it clicks into place right when you land, not having it the long descent after you've grabbed your pedals, uh, and all of those kinds of things are definitely the judges are, are looking at and looking for. Yeah, still a tough one to beat, though. Chance Moore setting the bar so high so early with that 82.6. Yeah, we're going to see where Lucas is going to fit in with that as the judges crunch the numbers, looking at all their categories, ticking all their boxes, uh, but definitely putting himself at least in the conversation to be in the top three as he would like. And I think we're going to see with a lot of these riders that have shown a massive amount of relief after run number one, we may see things loosen up a little bit in the second run and start to see them riding with, uh, with that full confidence because now they know they can do it, which I love it so far down as, well, right? as a head game is just huge. Knowing you can do it, 
Well, it means you can do it, and then they can start stepping it up, and they're going to add that little styley element and the smoothness. Like you said, there's a few tricks we've seen today, a few of the riders' runs, where they may have been looking for that one little extra technical, the extra throw of the bars, you know, the, the tuck no hand, or a couple things like that that they're going to be able to click into place for run number two. So 28 riders, we're getting through run number one, and then we're going to re-rack everyone at the top, and we're going to do it again here at Silver Star. Yeah, you know, it's it's always a tough one with that first run. Do you throw it all out or do you do your kind of safety bit? A great score there for Lucas. Lucas skilled with a 71-3-3, so he's into fourth. So puts himself into the top five so far. 71-3-3, which a run that was good, but you can see him in his run. There's definitely a few things he can add on. So super exciting times as we get into our, our second runs or when we get into our second runs. But we're nowhere near that right now as we are just pumping through. Elof Lind, another Swedish. Rider. This is his first time in Canada looking up to uh, looking up to Emilio Hansen, Martin Soderstrom, him and, and Lucas definitely training together. You said it before, Mikey, one of the things that defines a lot of these riders is where they ride in the winter. Yeah, in their off season, you know, these Swedish riders getting to spend having to spend most of their time riding indoors and they've got a really great uh, airbag and indoor skate facility. So a lot of these Swedish riders really excel at the technical aspects, and there we see it with a backflip triple bar and a yeah. double tail whip out. This is the first slope style for Elofs, currently 23rd in the world. 360 triple bar there again. The technical riding really playing to his strengths now right now. Elof going into the flat drop, collecting all his thoughts. 360 tuck no hander landing a little bit inside, so he's going to have to really pump for speed for the super booter. 360x to late tail whip. Backflip bar to tuck no hander onto the surgeon's table. 360 down. It's looking smooth on his first slope style run. Finish line jump for Elof. 360 whip all the way to the finish. Great, great first truck go at a slope style competition for the young Swede. He's thumbs up. He is stoked. Such a technical run there, Derek. Yeah, Elof Lin, he is pumped. And these, these, these Swedes, you know, we're seeing these little pockets. So you're seeing it with some Canadian riders, the German riders, the Swedes. These little pockets of riders that start to gather together and push each other. And, and that collective feeling of, of kind of everybody is stepping each other up. And, you know, what they say, like a, a rising tide raises all boats. And we're seeing it coming out of a few of these little pockets in Slopestyle. And it's so exciting because the core of this is so hot right right now and the the level that they're chasing with with Emil Johansson and Fedko and Nikolai Rogakin is so high but if you're young and you see the possibility of that then it, it you don't have to wonder if it's possible you just go out and chase it and that's what these riders are doing and it's really I think we're, we're at the beginning of a great great phase in slope style yeah we uh, we almost are, are on the border of saying there may be a changing of the guard coming soon with some of these young riders and we said that you know a few years ago with people like Emilio Hansen and Eric Fedko bursting onto the scene and now they are the top guns of the sport and then we see some of these other younger Swedish riders and like you were saying a rising tide uh, kind of raises all boats but there's also some sort of a gravity around these riders that are really pushing the sport that they draw other riders in around them from their local areas and just seeing that you know a guy that you can see at your local hill is also winning at the world tour level is going to kind of drive you to really push yourself. So we're just getting through some of the recap of Elof's run here. On that super booter, 360 bar to late tail whip. Combos on almost every feature, and that is going to very, very, bode very well for him when it comes down to the judges' scores. Yeah, we will see. He doesn't yeah, yeah. know. We don't know. <laughs> it's always, <laughs> I've, I've given up on guessing on what scores are going to look like. I just wait as anxious as Elof is right now to see what that score is going to look like. Chance Moore, his, whole, his early score holding up to a whole bunch of, uh, of challengers. Max May and Toby Miley, those, those scores have been locked in for a while. Lucas Skill definitely taking a swing at it with the 71. We'll see where Elof Lin puts himself into that conversation. But of course, this is only qualifying day. So we're going we're gonna to chip it down to 15 riders from today, and then we're going to go again tomorrow. And from that, 
we're going to get some, uh, some people moving on. But we do have a score for Elof Lunda, 74. So a new man sitting in a podium spot right now in that bronze medal position, 74 even for Elof Lund. So he's looking like he's pretty pleased with that. It, it, does he have more? Well, run two will tell us. Uh, but, you know, pretty much the polar opposite of a young up-and-coming hungry rider here. We have Sam Pilgrim, a legend of slope style, and he is looking to make his way back onto the world yeah, tour cool. after a bit of a hiatus. So really exciting to see Sam Pilgrim back in a crankwork slope style. It's been a minute. Yeah, he's trying to earn his way back into Joyride that we've seen him in several times before. Had a big jump in the FMB rankings yeah. going from 40th to 20th. So we see him pretty high on the start list there. Backflip tail whip on, backflip tuck no hander off into the step up. 360 tail whip, spinning opposite towards his back foot there. Here we go into the flat drop. He is one of the first riders to flat trick a flat drop feature. And there we see the 360 X off. Here we go into the super booter. Oh, wanted to go for a big extension on that backflip Superman, just not getting quite there. There we go, 360 tuck on. Flat drop, tabletop off, throwing the variation. Again, those combos really gonna help with the judges. Big front flip, tuck no hander from Sam Pilgrim. So put your hands together, folks. Sam Pilgrim, for the first time in many years, making his way down a Crankworks slope style course. Yeah, that is just so exciting to see. I mean, there's something about the way Sam Pilgrim rides that's so distinct. Whether it's just the amplitude or the aggression that he throws the tricks with, it looks, when you see Sam Pilgrim, you could be, you know, 300 meters away and watch him hit a jump and be like, that's Sam Pilgrim. You can tell from a mile away. And you could see, we, we heard him on the finish line, Mike, just say, oh, I missed the one. You know, so we know that there's, there's a little bit more in the tank for Sam Pilgrim. That one, though, it just had such a distinctive style, and I'm really excited to see Pil Sam Pilgrim back in the slope style mix at Crankworks. Yeah, and I think that part of that distinct style you're talking about is just the, the command in his landing that Sam Pilgrim puts down. You can watch every one of these tricks. When he comes down to the ground, he knows he's going to stomp the landing and he's going to push down for as much speed as he can. There is no hesitation of what he's going to do next. And so maybe that comes with a little bit of experience, maybe it comes with a little bit of that British gruff, but Sam Pilgrim, definitely exciting one to watch and one you can spot regardless of the neon colored bike. Yeah, it's awesome to see Sam Pilgrim back in the mix. So now we're gonna wait, and uh, this is probably the one thing that he didn't miss uh, when he was away from Slopestyle, is waiting for scores to drop as you just sit there and you're so, the, it's just such an anxious time for the riders, but you, know, you can see the fans gathering around the title Slopestyle track, just attracting everybody to come. And you know, we talked a little bit about, and I'm curious, if we'll have to ask Reader if this was a design feature or they just got a little lucky, but the fact that they, the track is lined with trees is keeping it nice and sheltered from the, from, from the wind, and as well, it's keeping a little bit of moisture in the ground, so it kind of just stays nice and tacky, and it means that the track is running perfect. We're not seeing the ruts or holes or anything develop in the landings built perfect. So Sam Pilgrim with a 69.66, dropping him into seventh position so far, but we know just from watching Sam ride, there's more in the tank there, and he can clean that up and probably add a fairly big handful of points into that run. So, back up to the top, another British rider, Marcel Hunt. He's been in the mix all season long. He's ex super exciting to watch. And Marcel Hunt, he's at the top. He's ready to kick things off and really, really excited to show us his best. We're definitely getting down to the pointy end of the field here, Mikey, as some of these are some of the higher ranked slope style riders we've got in the field today. Yeah, Marcel getting uh, getting a top 10 that got him an invite to the Magaza slope style in Rotorua last year. Is and there we saw a backflip bar to a cork seven out of the whale tail from Marcel Hunt. Huge front flip on that step up feature. You were talking about he heating up a run. Marcel is coming out red hot right now. The young British rider actually had a pretty bad crash early in the week, was really stiff, and he seems to have shaken that off quite well here. Going into his first run of qualifying, 360 down, absolute perfect landing into the super booter. Backflip X to late tail whip, barely getting his hands back on the bars. Bar spin up to the surgeon's table. Flat drop flip down, getting it back underneath him. Marcel, one more jump, pedaling as hard as he can. Backflip bar to tuck no hander. 
Marcel Hunt getting it top to bottom by the skin of his teeth. Big sigh of relief right there. Things almost going very pear-shaped on that super booter. Yeah, definitely. You talked about late tail whip. That was as late as you can leave it and still get it back around in line where you can ride away. But Marcel Hunt, yeah, hot, hot, hot out of the top. Big tricks, big, solid execution. A lot of combos and, and you know, three tricks on that final jump. Let's take a look at this one here as he started his runoff with a bang. Yeah, back double bar on and then you Using that quarter pipe feature, even steep short lip, and able to get that cork seven cranked around and then straight into a huge front flip on that step up feature of Marcel. Here we go. See that backflip bar to late tail whip, nearly missing the grab on the bars, nearly missing the pedals, making it bounce for him and able to recoup, get back up, and still throw a trick onto the surgeon's table. So, gonna get a couple of dings from the judges on that. Backflip bar to tail whip variation, but the level of start difficulty very high off the go. So it's going to be interesting to see where they slot him in in this ranking on run number one. Yeah, and again, with, the, with it being the first run for Marcel, he knows he can clean that up. He knows that he's got the ability. Those are all tricks that are in his pocket that he's got. He knows how to do. And if we put that run down clean, it is going to see a significant raise in the score. So not making any wild uh, predictions on what the score is, but guaranteed that score can be higher when he goes back up and executes that run top to bottom the way he would like, the way he dreams about it, the way he probably visualized it before he dropped in. But Marcel Hunt still showing us, you know, everybody's starting to show their hand now. We ha It's been a while since we've all been together, and some of these young riders we haven't seen in a crankwork slope style competition at all before. So the riders starting to show their hands to put their cards on the table and show us a little bit of what they've got. Some of them have already kind of maxed themselves out and some of them we know they missed something or they just have a, a pocket run. And I, I love the way you described earlier the strategy because there's not one set strategy for this. You can put your banger on first run, you can drop a safety run first run and everybody's got a different idea of what that should look like or what it needs to look like for them. for for success. Um, what do you think goes into that strategizing like in, in terms of their own mental game? You know, I think it really comes down to the rider. But here we got a score coming in for Marcel. So a 72 for Marcel Hunt, which puts him into fifth. And fifth place with that run, with the ability to clean it up, I think is a strong testament to how good that run actually was, and maybe even more so how good it can be. Yeah, the degree of difficulty for all of his tricks is so high. But next rider up, we got David Lieb out of the USA. You know, he's actually no stranger to winning at this level. He won the 2019 Cliff Slope Style at the US Open just a few years ago. Haven't seen him in Slope Style competition in about two years during the world shutdown, but good to see him back on track. Yeah, so David Lieb dropping in now to the title Slope Style course and getting things fired up. David Lieb. Backflip bar to bar spin rewind, doing it two different directions. There we see it, 360 double bar to X. So much technicality. Backflip tail whip for David Leave a little bit short on that step up, but not going to hurt him too much knowing that he's got to regroup for this flat drop feature. David originally coming from BMX, so he's got a lot of that technical ability, able to throw the bars whenever he wants. And there we see an opposite 360 off the flat drop into the super booter, double tail whip perfectly to pedals into the surgeon's table. 360, opposite 360 up. Truck driver, regular way down. And into the finish line jump. Front flip from David Lieb. Haven't seen one of those from him in competition in a long time. Very good to see a T to B from the USA rider. GT David Lee. That was absolutely stomped on that front flip on the finish jump. So big, so committing to just pitch it over the front. And I think one of the things that's maybe the, the least understood but most difficult part of a front flip on a bike, really on anything, is you are completely blind the whole way around. You don't see your landing until you're on it. You're just seeing, you know, he's probably coming around and he's seen that Red Bull arch go through his vision going, 
I hope, I hope, I hope, and boom. So to, to throw that, to have the confidence to toss that on a jump that big for David Leap, absolutely spectacular. Uh, really exciting to see David Leap back in the Crankworx slope style mix and, and definitely making a case for himself on this run. Yeah, and he's definitely one of those riders using the technical ability and then able to do his tricks both directions. And so what we mean by that when we say opposite direction, most riders have a preferred direction of spin or rotation. Usually that's towards their back foot. So if you're doing a 360 and you ride right foot forward, you spin it to the left. So David actually able to spin both directions and those opposite direction tricks, scoring much higher with the judges. Think about trying to sign your name with your left hand is the kind of easiest way to do it, but with much, much higher consequence. Yeah, exactly. If you blow a signature, uh, maybe your check bounces or you know, you, you you just have a scribbly signature. These guys are definitely putting their well-being, health and well-being on the line with the opposite tricks. And we've seen it really develop where for, for years, you know, when it was Brandon Seminuk and Brett Reeder, it was very rare. You'd only see the guys at the top of the podium doing it. Now everybody's starting to understand that you can't almost have an opposite side. You just have to be able to do everything both directions if you want to be a player in this game. And the riders are stepping up to that challenge, which is just so exciting to see. We keep talking about the future, the, the slope style, and even where slope style is at right now. And David Lee, definitely part of that core of the group, and he has definitely shown us why with that run. Yeah, definitely. Good to see him back on the circuit. And so we're just waiting for our judges, again, with those opposite tricks, making it very difficult to score these runs and having to maybe take extra looks at the replays for those judges to make sure, is he spinning towards his back foot? Is he throwing the bars the opposite direction? Did he catch them cleanly? And then you've got all the basic amplitude, fluidity, execution, and all of those going into the score. So I've said it a hundred times, I am so glad that we just get to talk about these runs and don't have to put numbers on paper. Yeah, it's definitely a, a difficult and thankless job. So a big thanks to the judges in the slope style world for doing what they do and allowing us to have this sport and to do it at such a high level. So David Leap now, he's got these anxious moments waiting for the score to drop. Here we go, a 71 flat, 71.00. So seventh for David Leap. So the, uh, the, the top three scores haven't been bothered for a long, long time. And we know we've got some heavy hitters on this start list that have run and some real heavy hitters to go. Bernd Winkler, Austria, Bernd Winkler, I should say, Austrian rider. He, uh, he had his first dabble in speed and style in Innsbruck and absolutely loving it. This guy's definitely got the bike handling skills. He's super fast when you put him out on a, on a racetrack, whether it's pump track or dual slalom, but slope style still true to his heart. Yeah, he's done, been doing slope style for 10 years, and now he said after doing that speed and style, super excited to do more of it. And there we see backflip yeah! tuck and then backflip double bar. Choosing to ride a full suspension for the first time this week in slope style. There we see a big cork seven muscling it around for Bernd Winkler. Su super technical rider. We've seen some amazing manual variation tricks from him in the past. There we go, truck driver off the flat drop into the super booter, cranking hard. Backflip, tail whip, just getting those pedals underneath. Super smooth. Backflip, table onto the surgeon's table. 360 down, nice and smooth. One more jump for the young Austrian rider. 360 whip, stomping his first run. Bernd Winkler, no stranger to the slope style world championship but doing what he can here at the title slope style and silver star for the Crankworx Summer Series. And another rider who you can just see the emotion pouring off of in the finish area. They're so, so happy and relieved to put down a run top to bottom. And Bernd Winkler, no exception to that. <laughs> just, he's gassed, but he's grinning. And that's great to see all these riders. They're just so excited. His run, you know, it started off super strong, the tuck no hander uh, with the backflip and then right into this. I mean, Mikey, the combinations these riders are throwing down, it's, it's, looking, it's looking great. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, I think that's where the, the level of slope styles changed in just the last two to three years that it used to be if you did a jump with a two variation trip, something like a backflip tail with backflip bar spin, you were up on the topper echelon of scores. Nowadays, it has to be at least a dual combo trick. Backflip double tail whip, backflip double bar spin. 
you know, 360 double bar. Now we're even seeing 360 triple bars we saw from David Lee. We saw backflip double bars from Chance, We've or triple bars from Chance. We've seen so many multiple variations, and it's only getting tougher for these riders to throw more variations in. The only perk is that this course is, again, so big that they're having extra time in the air to get those variations down. But there's that mental side again is, do you know, have the confidence in yourself on these large features that you can put down those multiple combos? Yeah, it's just incredible to see. And, and you know, we're not even into our, basically what I'll call our regulars on the Crankworks FMBA Slopestyle World Championship scene, which is the next five guys. These are the ones who are just looking to burst onto that scene. So this, this level, these guys are all so strong. And, and I really think, you know, we talked about it earlier, Mikey, but there's going to be some looking over the shoulder going on with some of those regulars on, on, the, on the top tier of Slopestyle for, for some of these young up-and-comers. Now, there should have been six of them, but, of course, we don't have Griffin Paulson on site right now. He's down getting that ankle checked out, and we're very, very hopeful that it's nothing, uh, nothing too bad. But definitely, it was a, it was a big slam, and, and these riders, while they're... They do take hits and they know how to fall. Uh, still, the, the injury is possible there. So a 70.33 for Burned Winkler. That's ninth position so far and five riders to go only. So he's going to be for sure in the top 15, which is, uh, well, that's only run number one, though, so it doesn't mean anything at the moment. Alex Alenko, Swedish rider, another one studying uh, under, uh, well, I mean, the, the thousands of Swedish, top Swedish slope style riders. Alex Alenko, one of the riders that actually got to compete on this course last year. So is that going to come into play today? Yeah, he's definitely got a little bit of extra experience there. He's backflip bar to one foot can, yeah. slipping the pedal though, and having to just throw the bar spin out into the step up feature. 360 there. Looks like maybe he's going to cruise this one down. Alex coming off of one of his best finishes back in 2019. He actually got a third at the Rotorua slope style, Max's slope style in memory of Magaza, and he really wants to get back to that podium level ride. So there we go, backflip bar to one foot can again, getting that one dialed in. Tail whip up the surgeon's table. 360 down, nice and smooth for the Swedish rider. Into the finish boot, big lazy backflip. So Alex knows he missed it right off the start, so kind of using that one maybe as a practice run, just get a couple of tricks ironed out, knowing that he's got a whole lot more left in the tank on run number two. I think that's exactly right, Mikey. I think as soon as he slipped the pedal on the whale tail there, that was kind of it for his uh, his, his banger run. And, and these riders know, and they're always playing the balance game of how much to risk versus what the reward is. And if you've already slipped a pedal at the top, then the, the reward for risking it all goes way, way down because you know it's not gonna be a really high score. So for Alex Alenko, just getting a bit more mileage on this course. First of all, it's a blast. They have to, you know, they love putting putting the laps in. And you saw there, he wasn't able to get the uh, to get the trick on the off ramp on the whale tail. So now, just finding speed, figuring out what the wind's doing, and all of those things that are going to come into play when he wants to put his dream run down for run two. Yeah, and there we see. Not the score he's going to be taking home for the end of the day. He's going to go back up. Re-rack once we're done with our last four riders here at the Summer Series Slope Style, title Slope Style. Nah, no rest in Slope Style. Straight back up to the top, British rider Tom Eisted, another one who got to ride this course last year in the uh, World Tour of Trankworks World Tour stop that down, happened boys. on the title Slope Style track. One of the most infectiously fun riders to be around of the entire tour. Just an absolutely solid guy, but he can't just be a good guy because he is one of the oh. deadliest Slope Style riders on the planet. Yeah, Cork seven yeah. onto the whale tail. Backflip, tuck no hander off. Ice T starting things off with a bang. Flip whip on the step. Of, oh no, slipping pedals. So Tom right now, one of the alternates for Red Bull Joyride. And again, one of the perks of getting at the top. There we go, front flip off the flat drop. Tom, even with that slip pedal, is not leaving anything to chance. To back, double backflip on the super booter. 360 up the surgeon's table, flat flip down. Tom's not gonna let that pedal slip get to him. He's gonna throw down a big run here. Front flip, tuck no hander, Ice-T making it to the finish. He's gonna be wanting to clean that up a little bit, but still not letting the slip pedal affect him. 
Well, Tom Eisted is is a strategic genius, in my opinion, for that run because it really matters where you end up in in this day to qualifying. Right, you only need to be in the top 15. Now he had a pretty big bobble there, but he didn't let his run go like we've seen some other riders do. He still put the bangers into the run on the rest of the features, which is going to give him. It may not be a great score, but it's still going to be a score for Tom Eisted, and that could, at the end of the day, be the difference between 20th if he. Had just given up the run and somewhere in the top 15 because that's all you really need to end up being and that I think Tom I said that was a really clever way to go about that run there yeah you talked earlier about asking about strategy you know for some of these riders and I think this is a perfect example of what a veteran strategy can be is knowing that this isn't his perfect run even if this was his quote safety run it didn't end up perfect but it's not one willing to throw away because every time he gets on course there's a chance that that can happen so throw everything you have Make sure you get your tricks dialed and then see where that slots you have to run number one. And at the end of the day, he may be able to, be able to cruise his second lap and save everything for the finals tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see where, where that goes in. But I mean, certainly no safety in that run, like the tuck no hander front flip on the finish jump. That's just so incredible. The precision, the the the, the guts to, to throw that trick, all of it. So Tom I said he, he did lose the pedals on the on the step up there. Luckily was able to uh, we've seen it a couple times, a mistake on that one on that feature, not as costly as it would be on other features on this course. Yeah, you know, it kind of bodes well to how the course was designed. Having that step up feature before the very, very slow speed flat drop means that riders can kind of do the tricks that maybe are a little bit higher risk, maybe they don't have fully in the bag that they can afford to just slip a pedal and not fully go down and it doesn't throw out their whole run. So. So there we go, strategy paying off for Tom Eisted. Third place right now with a 75 flat with a run that for sure was not the way he intended it to go. When both feet are off the pedals and you're dragging on your saddle on a dirt jumper, that's probably not what the plan was. But to be in third place with the run going pretty haywire, I, I got to give it up there to, to strategy for Tom Eisted. That was really clever for him to do that. Now we're moving right on. We are into the big dogs of slopestyle. Hoopy Lucas Hoopert, the Swiss rider. He's a mainstay on the Crankworx FMB World Tour, and he is here. Another one who came here last year, competed, and is here, I think, really for the love of this course. Absolutely. You know, Lucas Hooper kind of came here last year and had been sitting comfortably at that like yeah. seventh, eighth in uh, the joyride and kind of slope style circuit. Came here last year, saw the level riding, went home and put a ton of work in. And we saw it just there with a backflip bar spin up and the double tail whip off. And there we go, 360 and choosing a 360 there in the middle of the course. Just those little extra fun things upping his score. So Hoopy with a double truck driver off the flat drop. Front flip, nice and corked out on the super booters, carving down the landing, make sure he gets all the speed in that berm. 360 downside whip onto the surgeon table. 360 toboggan down, sprinting through the corner. One more for Hoopy. Back flip, tail whip to late bar spin. Lucas Hooper putting down a good one on run number one. A little bit wobbly out of the whale tail, but everything else turned out nice and clean. Yeah, so that was so clean for the Swiss rider, and it really feels like the bar has been raised as we've moved into the, the athletes that are mainstays on the FNBA World Tour, who are doing those Crankworx World Tour events regularly. That was such a clean run for Lucas Hooper. And the, the combos, you know, that late bar on the last one, those kinds of things, the, the precision demanded and the confidence to throw the bars when you're just about into the landing. Yeah, here we see that double whip off the whale tail. Such a short lip to be able to spin the bike around and then here in to that step up feature. And doing the big kick out, almost like an air walk double tail whip opposite there for Hoopy. And then the 360 toboggan, you know, just that little bit of extra degree of difficulty, taking the hand off, grabbing the saddle. And here we see that backflip tail whip to late bar spin. Hoopy really showing that he's put in a ton of work over the off season. And we saw that with his earlier result this year at Innsbruck. I think one of his best with a top five.
Yeah, he's putting himself into the conversation to truly be one of the big dogs of Slopestyle right now. And with runs like that, it is no wonder. So 82.66 is what he needs if he wants to move into first place. The judges have that in their hands right now. Hoopy has done what he needs to do, and now he's doing what he loves to do, which is to be a rock star of the Slopestyle world. It's signing autographs for the local Vernon kids that have come up here to check out the qualifiers. This is only qualifiers, Mikey. This is day one. We got 30, 28 riders. And uh, Lucas Hooper, now we're just seeing the score start to tick, 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 up, up it goes. 82 flat even for Lucas Hooper. So that's second place and extremely close, only by six tenths of a point. So Lucas Hooper now just behind Chance Moore and he has put himself into second with that run. Extremely, I gotta say, Swiss precision on that run. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely the way to describe it. Swiss precision and just an amount of fun that you don't see from a lot of riders. All right, so we go right back up to the talk, uh, up to the top. David Godziak, he stood on the podium here last year with uh, two other Red Bull riders. Uh, of course, it was um, Emilio Hansen taking the gold and then Fedko in second. He was in third, taking that bronze. We've seen some, uh, some wild stuff from Godziak in practice, and I'm very excited to see if he's going to pull it out in this run, Mikey. We'll see, again, this is just qualifying. So starting with the backflip, X up, and then a huge 360 tuck, no hander. Triple whip, though, on that step up. I was just about to say, maybe not the banger run that David would usually go for, but this is something to be watching. Tail whip, looks like, yep, regular tail whip down that flat drop into the super booter. Twister, perfectly executed. Three full rotations there for David Godziak. Truck driver up the surgeon's table. Tail whip down. One more jump. The finish booter for the Polish rider. Cash roll, bar spin. A huge variation there. One of the only riders able to do the variation on that cash roll. So casual, it almost looks like it was too easy for him. So this guy has a gold medal from X Games in his pocket from a week ago. He's here now and watching that run and knowing what I know of David Godzik in slope style, that was, I'm going to say, mid to high, like a mid-range run for him. If You know, yeah, like a, like a 7 out of 10. Um, so uh, we really do see now, and I think this is what's so important for the young riders that are coming into slope style, to see what it looks like at the top level, right? For them to come in and be on course in the start gate and see David Godziak do that and know that, that he's certainly got a lot more in the bag if he needs it. Yeah, and again, we've said it so many times already. This is run number one, day number one, qualifying, and we're not even all the way through the field yet. We still have a score coming in. There it oh, is. All right. Well, the judge is loving it. David Godziak, 88 even. So a new first place for David Godziak. Chance more moving down into second and Hoopy into third place. So Tom Eisted still in the top five with a run that had a significant issue in it. Got to give him props for the... For, for the strategy, but David Godziak, he has put himself into first place right now with an 88 with that run. So really exciting to see the top dogs throwing it down and really starting to see what it looks like. Well, we go straight back up. There's only one man left in run number one. See the GoPro on the head of Nikolai Rodgakin. He is a fan favorite. He gets people hyped because he is hyped and his riding style is absolutely his own. Absolutely, you know, he has kind of defined himself as slope star. And there we see a perfect cash roll onto the whale tail. Big backflip off from Nikolai Rogakin, the American rider. Big, lazy double tail whip there. Cruising into the flat drop feature. Nikolai working a ton on his variations for this feature explicitly. Here we go, the fast plant 360. Dabbing that foot and kicking off. Now into the super booter. Another twister stomping that. So dialed. There we go. Superman seat grab up. Tail whip down the flat drop. Nikolai, one more jump to go. Sprinting into the finish booter. Opposite cash roll for Nikolai Rogakin. 
Unbelievable run for Rogakin there, and you could see the joy he takes from this riding. He was smiling mid-run as he was doing it because he just loves it. He's probably laughing. He's you know watching these guys tell their stories at the bottom is one of my favorite parts of these events. So Nikolai Rogakin, you said he's been training. He's adding variations. He's adding opposite tricks. It's the things that separated some of the other riders from him in the early part of his career. He's recognized that, and he's taken his massive rotations that he's known for and added those things. If we have a Regakin that's doing oppo tricks and combo tricks, is that, a, is that an unbeatable combo? Well, we're going to have to see both today and then in a few weeks' time at the Super Bowl of Slope Style, where he's going to have a full field of Slope Style World Championship athletes to compete against. But here, again, qualifying, run number one, we've seen two twisters, we've seen multiple double backflips, we've seen cash rolls both directions, and there we see Nikolai with the smile and the grit. That kind of defines Nikolai's riding style, both intensity and intense joy. And of course, no other rider loves to hear the crowd and feeds off the crowd noise, so he's got to be more stoked than anybody that we've got spectators back. So David Godziak put up an 88 even. Nikolai Rogakin going into first with a 90 point run. And he is, it almost looks like he's dumbfounded. He can't even believe it. So a 90 for Nikolai Rogakin breaking that uh, score barrier into the 90s for the first time today. Godziak with an 88. Uh, just incredible riding here. And one of the things to me that really differentiated those last two guys was the amplitude. The, of course, the technicality, the difficulty of the tricks, but not only that, they are taking those tricks to the moon. If you do a twister and you take that twister higher than anybody else even hit that jump in the day, well, the judges are gonna love it. And they rewarded him with that score for sure. Yeah, I think, I think maybe as I spoke a little bit early in uh, David's run, he kind of did a couple of what I would call basic tricks for someone of his caliber of riding onto the whale tail and off, as where Nikolai, choosing to do that very high consequence cash roll on, definitely upped his score a little bit. And then throwing in that opposite trick there at the finish, something we haven't seen from Nikolai up until maybe this year in competition, really kind of upping the ante against, you know, the man who just took home an X Games medal a week ago. Yeah, and it's kind of wild for, for to, to be watching this. This is the Crankworx Summer Series. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from it, but it's not a world tour event. Two guys on the same feature doing twisters, like you said, 1080s, back to back, in, in their runs at, at a, an event like this, it's just so incredible. It's fantastic for, for the crowd. I mean, you can see Nikolai just getting, uh, getting the adoration of the kids and the slope style fans. It's so cool to see the whole kind of scene just blowing up the way it is. And, and I think just underscores the importance and the value in having some of these big name riders coming to, to the, the Crankworx Summer Series here. It's, it's making everybody's level come up and of course making these, uh, these uh, or the, the spectators day. Yeah, not, not just the spectators as we spoke about earlier. You know, some of these young kids competing today in slope style probably have posters on the wall and, you know, sc screensavers of the riders they're now riding against. And it's one thing to watch it on, on Red Bull TV. It's one thing to watch it even from the sidelines. It's a completely another thing to be riding the same course at the same time in the same conditions with the world's best and to see that, you know, this is why they are at that level. They can take a course that you can ride and throw the same trick and they can elevate another step above and another step above that and feed off each other and do it when the pressure is on. So it's really kind of a great growing experience for the riders that are here to compete and an amazing spectator experience for the locals here in Silver Star. All right, well, we are gonna take a very short break as we re-rack our riders at the top of the title slope style course, Crankworx, Crankworx Summer Series Silver Star 2022 coming at you live very shortly. Keep your eyes on the course.
We are finished with run number one of the title slope style, the Silver Star Bike Park Crankwork Summer Series. Absolutely firing. One run down, one run to go, and what a run it was. Yeah, just going through a couple of our banger tricks. Again, this just qualifying. Here we see a flip whip onto the whale tail very early from Chance Moore. Youngster Canadian double flip also on that super booter. You know, this young Canadian rider slotted himself inside with some of the greats of the Slope Style World Championship Tour. And then there can be not much said about the man on course, David Godziak, a week ago, X Games gold medal, and then coming through with his warm up safety run that included double tail whip. Here we see the twister on the Super Booter, absolutely perfect to the top of the landing. Man. Yeah, Godzik spinning the other way with the double bar and then wrapping it up. I mean, it was picture perfect. And then our leader right now, fan favorite, Nikolai Ragakin. Such a big move onto the whale tail. Amplitude through the roof on that whole run for Ragakin. Yeah, Nikolai just throwing banger after banger. The cash roll up, the double tail whip. Super seater on and then throwing that opposite cash roll at the finish. So we've got a bit of an international looking field here at the top of the uh, results sheet. Nikolai Ragakin, David Godziak, Chance Moore, USA, Poland, Canada, and then Hoopy from uh, Switzerland, Lucas Hooper. I will just roll on down. I mean, it's a pretty international field for a Canadian event. We've got a few athletes in here. I'm looking at Sam Pilgrim and Ben Thompson specifically, who are going to be looking to clean things up in run number two. And then some real young athletes there. I mean, Caden Ingersoll, 
what a what a time for him to just be soaking this all in. Yeah, and he's only two spots out of qualifying for our main event tomorrow. Again, the number the the placement to beat is 15th to get into the final for tomorrow. And then once you make that final, it is all about trying to get the win or trying to get that wild card golden ticket into Red Bull Joyride. So, so there's a few more to watch on that list, especially Mike Ross. Yeah, absolutely. So for, for those of you that have watched Crankworks World Tour events, FMB events, typically we would re-rack and run from last place to first place. But what we are doing here is we are going straight back in the exact same order that we ran in run number one, which means our first rider in the gate is going to be Jacob Murray. He had, a, well, he had a bit of a bobble, I will say, uh, in the corner. It wasn't even really a, 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 an execution crash. It wasn't a trick crash. It just tucked his front wheel and lost it in the last corner. So Jacob Murray, I'm going to call this a redemption run for him. Yeah, he's stoked. You saw it. Let's go out of the top, charging into the fin, the start whale tail, backflip bar up. Good execution there. Backflip, one-footed X, almost a Grizz Air X on that step down. Cork seven. Oh, no, just coming up a little bit short on that rotation. So Jacob Murray... Not going to be his day, but you can hear the crowd cheering for the young Canadian rider. He's going to hike back up and roll in and cruise out, but his day is going to be done here. Yeah, that's a tough one for Jacob Murray. He was looking good. He had the huge amplitude. He's getting the crowd riled up. I mean, if, if these guys have learned anything from watching Nikolai Rogakin ride over the years, it is we do it for the crowd. They love it. And uh, so for Jacob Murray, that was a tough way to finish. Just getting right up on that case pad on the Cork 7. Hopefully we'll, uh, you know, we'll be able to figure out why. But it looks like he's obviously fine as he is continuing the show for the crowd here on the title slope cell track. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Jacob Moore. This is all for you guys. His score is not going to put him in touch, but this is going to be for the crowd. One more jump, double whip for Jacob Murray. So he's going to cross that finish line and kind of contemplate what could have been here at his first slope style event. Yeah, Jacob Murray, you can see he's smiling, but definitely underneath that smile is some, some serious uh, regret, I guess, or, or just some, some feelings that from that run. Is Jacob Murray, had a, he had a good one going uh, at the top of the course, but unfortunately on the Cork 7, just kind of coming up short on the case pad, and it, I'm not 100% sure why. He certainly had the amplitude there if it was the rotation, or he just lost the back wheel at the top. So he's actually, he's got a very unique, unique style on that Cork 720 here looking at the replay. He actually doesn't keep looking through the trick. He looks for his first rotation, spots the landing, and then whips his head around for the second. And I think that pause in the middle lost him that extra maybe 10 to 15 degrees he needed to roll out smoothly. And, and that's all she wrote for the young Canadian. Yeah, so 30.66. So uh, Jacob definitely doing it for the crowd out there. And every one of these slope style riders doing it just to get everyone hyped up and so excited. We're going straight back up to the top. Simon Kerr, he had a 61.66, the first full pull for the title team rider yeah. that we saw out Come of on, the boys. entire field yesterday. And uh, just stoked to be part of the group. You know, being in this field with these riders for some of these young athletes is a, is a pretty incredible incredible experience yeah and he's definitely gonna see if he can improve you know there is still a chance he can make it into that top 15 but no nope, he's gonna do this as kind of a fun run another one for the crowd choosing to do that tire grab nice backflip big 360 on that step up feature Cool little tire slasher that roller in there hoopy actually choosing to pull a 360 in his run that was mind-blowing here we go in to the super kicker Getting a little bit off balance there. You heard it on the mic, whoa. And now into the surgeon's table. He's gonna cruise it down to the finish. One more hit to go for Simon Kerr. Ladies and gentlemen, front flip. That was for you folks, put your hands together. Two top to bottoms. The Canadian rider, Simon Kerr. 
So Simon's just down there trying to catch his breath. You know, you, you could see that he was not able to, I don't know if he decided he wasn't able to better his first run. If he put down his dream run in the first one, there is only so much risk you can take, and it's always that balance. You know, you're, you're weighing up the scales, risk versus reward. So 47 there for Simon, slotting him into 20th overall. So that's going to do it. Qualifying, this is where it starts to feel a little ruthless. You know, we are only taking 15 into tomorrow, and it's just, it is kind of the the facts of the game. And so for some of these riders, if they look at those top 15s and know they don't have that run in their pocket currently, you know, I actually have a lot of respect for knowing that and then not putting your life on the line on this title uh, slope style course. So straight back up. Liam Bale has put down a strong run. He's in 12th right now with a 70.66. We have a few riders looking just from the outside. So anybody in, in that 15th to 10th range is still not going to be feeling all that confident going into this run. Yeah, no one is technically safe unless you're inside maybe that top five position right now. So here we go, backflip bar up the whale tail for Liam. 360 double X, X to X back off into the step up feature. 360 down whip, perfect to the top of the landing, perfect to pedals. Rewinding those bars there, just that little bit of an extra feature gonna help him on his score. Flat flip down, perfect rotation with that little bit of cork making it look so styly. Such a slow rotated double back for it from Liam. Bar spin up the surgeon's table. 360 X down. This looks like a really solid second run from Bayless. One more jump to go. Backflip tabletop. Oh no, disaster just getting a little bit back seat. Catching his pants and getting a little bit hucklebuck. Looks like he's all right, more disappointed than anything, knowing that was gonna be an improvement on run number one. Looks like it even took his shoe off for him. Yeah, he's trying to strap back into his shoe or his ankle brace or something down there. That was unfortunate as that run was fire top to bottom. He had some really, really high level tricks, some big amplitude and degree of difficulty. Definitely, definitely off the charts. So Liam Bayless, unfortunately, going down on that last jump. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get a look after at what went on there, but unfortunate for him. So front flip with the table, and then just, I think, a little bit short, and then getting bucked over the bars, and the bike landing right on him. So I'm glad to see Liam get up from that. Yeah, it looked like he, uh, he landed. He was going to be landing in a bit of a manual, so he grabbed a handful of brake, but in the same process, it ended up grabbing the back of his pants, which will lock that wheel and spit you right over the handlebars. You know, in years past, we used to call that the hucklebuck. And uh, it's more like riding a bucking Bronco at that point. There's not much you can do. So he's going to have to rest on run number one, currently sitting in 12th, and he's going to be uh, sitting on a bed of nails for the next... Yeah, big time, and this is one guy who definitely could have a say in that. Braden Baird, hey, he's sitting in 18th place right now, so only three spots from that shuffle position to move on into finals tomorrow. Braden Baird, hey, Vernon Ryder definitely wants to do it on home soil. Yeah, he does, and he's got the tricks to do it. There we go, backflip, no-look flip. To, wanted it to tuck no hander, didn't get it, so uh, looks like Braden knows that he's not going to be able to improve with missing that first hit, and he's just going to cruise down this title slope style course. So ladies and gentlemen, this is your Vernon local, Braden Barrett. Hey, put your hands together. He's on a cruiser, not gonna be moving on into the finals tomorrow, but he's had a good time out here. Big backflip table just for the crowd. Up onto the surgeon's table, 360 down. One more hit, ladies and gentlemen. Vernon local, Braden Barrett. Hey, for Mongoose, RST, and iLab. Bringing him home safe. So we are seeing again some strategy come into play from some of these riders when, uh, you know, a mistake on the first run, definitely some value in keeping things going, but a mistake high up on the second run when you're outside of that transfer spot and outside of the top 15, you know you're not going to be able to move in. Braden Barrett, hey, the iLab team rider, definitely wanting to move up, but, you know, he's making decisions there for his long-term uh, <laughs> long riding career, and I know we're going to see plenty more of Braden Barrett, hey. So right now he's in 18th. Uh, that is going to be, you know, best case for him uh, through the qualifier day today with the 28 riders. We still have a whole bunch of riders to go and a bunch of them who are outside of that spot but who didn't have the, the runs they were really hoping for. But we move straight on from Braden Barrett-Hay to Max Langille, another Canadian.
Canadian rider. He was on a 60.66, so in 21st. He's got a big jump if he wants to move into that top 15, and uh, he's going to have to add a few things to his run if, uh, if he wants to get in there, Mikey. Yeah, on run number one, he definitely had some variations, some combos that it looked like he wanted to go for but didn't quite have. There's one of them, the backflip bar to tuck no hander. 360 triple truck out, sprinting into this step up feature. Backflip toboggan. Oh no, going so big, missing the grab. Oh, just here and there, he said the sun caught him blind, couldn't see the grab he was going for in that backflip and having to ditch out on the bike. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Looks like he's got something in his eye he's trying to get out. So that's really unfortunate for Max as he was going huge and it was starting to look like one of those runs that just builds and builds and builds all the way throughout. But on that one, you could see from pretty early in, he was way too high and the rotation was already too far. And that one, the, the landing's pretty short. Yeah, and with it being a step up feature, you can get, get away with that a lot of times. But when you're going as big as some of these slope style riders are trying to on this jump, here we see he went for the grab and something went into his eye, he said, and we saw him take his goggles off immediately after and try and clean it out. So he's gonna hike back up, looks like, and roll in for a little cruiser run, but that's gonna be the day for Max Langille. Well, the crowd absolutely loving this guy. He's he's definitely gotten some of the loudest cheers of the day. Hopefully his eye's okay. I mean, that's a tough one. When you put the goggles on to keep everything out of your eye. But unfortunately, sometimes you get those little jump bugs, the Mexican jumping beans that are bouncing around in there. And if it snaps under your eyelid in the middle of your slope style run, that is just about uh, the toughest luck that luck could be. So he's going to drop back in and he's going to put on a show for the crowd. Hopefully he is uh, able to see down the rest of this title slope style course. Yeah, definitely a tough break, such a kind of a freak occurrence, but he's not going to let it affect him there with the truck driver down the flat drop into the super booter. Huge backflip tail up and oh no, disaster again coming up short there. So Max just not having his day here on run number two. Looks like he's going to cruise it down and call it a day. So put your hands together one more time for the young Canadian. Max was throwing it down for you guys and it went to bite him again. Yeah, it's a it's sometimes it's a tough call to do to do the showman move, you know, the the we can call it the rogatkin, where you <laughs> jump back in after you've gone down and and really put it on for the crowd. Because if your head is maybe not in the moment 100%, you're feeling a little down about the way the run went. It can definitely you're still rolling into something of of pretty serious consequence. So happy to see that Max Langill take that second slam, and he's uh, maybe more confused than than anything else. But looks like he's going to be all right. Probably going to be a bit sore tomorrow after taking two hits in one slope style run. But Max Max Langill is at the bottom, he's upright, and he's, uh, well, he's done for today, but that is the nature of slope style. This is relentless and ruthless. We go straight back up to the top. French rider Nicolas Terrier, 63, 68, 33, so he's in 16th. He is one position out of that top 15. Does he have one position's worth more to add to this run? We're going to find out right now. Well, you know, the young French rider definitely new to the Crankworks and Slope Style Tour, but has plenty of good riders to train with back home. And there we see big backflip tabletop and rescuing with that little bit of over-rotation, getting the bar spin to tuck no handers, so still able to get the combo. And then huge 360 tail whip, huge amplitude. And I think some riders may be taking a page out of Hoopy's book and getting that little roller, adding a little bit of a flare feature and that's just gonna add to their point total. There we go, truck driver off the flat drop into the super booter. Big, lazy, 360 tuck no hander, huge extension. Flip up perfectly on to the surgeon table. Another 360 X up down. One more hit for the French. Nicholas Terrier, front flip, tuck no hander. Perfect execution. He's definitely gonna be happy with that. Definitely more degree of difficulty that run number two. Execution is really going to come down to see if he breaks into that top 15. Yeah, if I remember right, he wasn't able to get the hands off on that front flip tuck no hander on the first run. 
So we'll see if that's going to add what he needed. He's t he basically he needs to be a 69 to get himself into 15th, which is uh, you know an enviable position to be in moving on into into tomorrow. So he's definitely done his bit now. That clicked tabletop in the backflip, such a stylish trick. Just adding, as you said, those little elements and and loving to see, like you said, from Hoopy over the roller into the flat chop. You know, just. Just a little bar spin, but maybe it's enough if you only need a tenth of a point here or there. And then this finish jump, I mean, he's done his bit now. Is it going to be enough? Only the judges will decide. But that was definitely a exciting way. So 6-6-6-6. Six, 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 six. So it doesn't move him into the top 15. He ends up in 16th position. So not quite making the transfer spot for Nicholas Terrier. And that's a tough one as he definitely upped it. But uh, the judges, they're looking for perfection today. And that is all that they're going to accept into finals tomorrow. So moving straight on, Mark Diekman, he was on a 58-3-3 on the first run. He's in 23rd. He definitely needs to step it up. He needs to clean it up if he wants to move on. So tough, tough ask for these guys. Now there's some pressure on them. You know, you don't have that second run waiting for you if it doesn't go well here. So pressure building, mental game, this is where we see it. Yeah, and another aspect to this, a lot of these riders that dropped early in run number one maybe got a little bit different scoring from the judges not seeing the whole field go through. It's now that judging criteria is going to be way more tightened up for run number two. It's going to be even tougher for these riders to improve on run number one scores. Yeah. So here you go, Mark Diekman, German rider. Backflip bar up. Perfect. A little deep, but there we go. Backflip off. So kind of a repeat of run number one, but getting more speed. Backflip bar to tail whip on the step up. Just barely missing a pedal, but able to roll it out. Cruising into the flat drop. 360 down into the super kicker. Big backflip Superman from the German rider. Bar spin up the surgeon's table. 360 down, one more jump to go. Mark Diekman, put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, into the finish corral, front flip, tuck no hander, just getting it around. Stoked to be able to walk, roll away from that one. Mark Diekman out of Germany, putting it down on run number two. So we'll see when the scores come in, but definitely one of the things that the, the judges are going to be really paying attention to there. Oh, it looks like he's oh he's overwhelmed. His bars have got to wind it all the way back. The thousands of bar spins that he did all the way down just coiled up his brake cable. But some of the, the variations that they're looking for, and we saw in that run it had a 360, it had a backflip. But some of those things, especially when you only have this many features, if you don't add those combo pieces to them, you're going to see the score start to hurt. And, you know, you see there single backflip, or not a single, they're all single backflips, but yeah, a backflip uh, minus the combo. And then that one with a three trick variation. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of where the level has gotten to now. If you're not be able to at least do a double variation on each jump and then on the bigger features, the more time consuming features, throw in three or four combos, you're not going to be, he did improve though on run number two with that front flip tuck no hander, but still outside looking in 23rd place. 59.66. Yeah, so Mark Diekman not transferring on, but he is gaining some valuable experience in autograph signing for the fans, which is a huge part of this, and the kids absolutely loving it. These these riders, it's it's a brand new feeling for some of them to roll into a fee, uh, an event like this and be a, a true hero. So we go straight back up. Chance Moore, this man sat in the hot seat for a long, long time after run number one, and it was only the last two men on the course that were able to push him out. So Chance Moore, he's looking good right now with a run in the 80s for moving on in the top 15. I'd be quite surprised if that many people were able to beat him, but he is on course now to see what he can do for run number two. Flip whip up super deep on the title whale tail, but he knows he's comfortably into the finals tomorrow because this is just qualifying day. So after going a little deep on that, he's just going to take this as kind of another practice lap. There he is waving at the camera. He knows this one's for fun for the crowd. The local boy, Chance Moore, 360 down the flat drop into the super kicker, still pedaling hard. What does he want to do here? Big 360 table. Such a young rider to be so comfortable on this course with this level of field, with this type of pressure, knowing that to have that kind of wherewithal as a youngster to know that you've already got your qualifying position, just use this as a fun one and roll down to the bottom. 
Really smart riding from Chance. Yeah, that was veteran style, uh, veteran style riding from the young local rider. Uh, and one thing that I think we just noticed, or I just noticed, is Chance Moore on the start list was after Derek Priest, which means that Derek Priest not taking his second run, unfortunately. So uh, hopefully Derek's doing all right out there and is uh, just sitting beside the course watching. But we're gonna we'll get word to everyone once we get. Uh, you know, figure out what's going on. So Chance Moore, 46.66, still sitting in third, though resting on that 82.66 from number run number one. Everybody gets two runs, only the best score counts. So for some, that first run is going to be what they're going to lean back on, like Chance. And for others, they are looking to improve on what they did in the first run. Max May, the German rider, he's kind of in the middle of that. He has a 76. There were a couple things where I feel like he could probably tighten up, but definitely looking good right now for qualifying into finals tomorrow Mikey yeah and this will be another one of those kind of see if the uh, if he wants to use this as a practice lap and and go for it and see if he can improve or just cruise down and he's definitely just going to use your answer there's the answer right there this is a practice lap for the crowd he knows he's in a comfortable top five qualifying position and not going to risk anything going into tomorrow's final so the young German rider comfortably in to the finals tomorrow Right now in the top five. Nice lazy backflip on the super booter. Up onto the surgeon's table. Two more hits, little toboggan down. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Max May, the German rider. Big 360 into the finish, and he's going to be comfortably in to the finals tomorrow at the title slope style. Oh, exciting. So we're, things are starting to take shape now in terms of what the finals going to look like, that top 15, and of course all to play for tomorrow as the highest finishing rider that's not already qualified for Red Bull Joyride is going to earn themselves a golden ticket into that event, which is just such an incredible thing for any one of these riders. I'm sure they lay in bed at night just dreaming about imagining that crowd. I mean, and this crowd is pumping here, and we're going to see it fire up tomorrow. But it is definitely a dream of so many of these riders to get themselves onto that spot. So 73 points, eighth place for German rider Toby Miley. He is another one who's looking pretty strong. But we're starting to get into that range where there could be some passes from some of the riders on the outside looking in. So we'll see what Toby does with this one. But definitely, uh, you know, he's kind of un. It's unclear if he could be beaten right now and bumped out. I'd say it's pretty unlikely, but looking like he's going for it on this run. Yeah, double whip off the start, going a little bit deep though and having to check up for that step down out of the whale tail. And so he's gonna just take this as another cruiser, be comfortable in that eight position. And he's number 18 on our start list, so not too many people left. Mikey, do you think the speed is changing as we go through, as we run through 18 athletes a second time, or is the course starting to get a little bit faster? We're definitely seeing a few people go kind of deep into that whale tail in the second run. You know, it's a very possible that the course is running a little bit quicker. Uh, we do see the course uh, maintenance crew throwing down some water, trying to keep the dust down, and that water will also keep the course running at a consistent speed, but not maybe getting as much water on that very first start straight going into the whale tail. So. Riders having to be very, very kind of precise on the speed going into that whale tail for depending on the trick they're planning on doing. Well, for Toby Miley there, that's going to be a 33.66. He is still comfortably in eighth, which is well inside where he needs to be to qualify for finals tomorrow. So he's going to be uh, he's going to be relatively comfortable. I think he's going to be able to breathe for the next hour or so as the rest of the field makes its way down. And uh, you know, he's got a lot of the heavy hitters that are sitting ahead of him are still yet to come. So they're uh, they're already ahead of him. So he's kind of good there. But uh, Toby is done, and now he's able to just sit back, look cool and chill in the finish area as we wait for the rest of the riders to throw down their second runs here at the title slope style crankwork summer series firing here at silver star the swiss rider jan hageman he was a 60 even so in 22nd he's definitely got a bit of a chip on his shoulder to get something done here in run number two yeah definitely he had a bit of a as we like to call it the safety run on run number one you saw that he went for a bunch of single variation tricks but had time to do some more variations on those and here we go 720 up, a little bit of a case, but he's able to get out. Oh, and he's not quite getting that step down trick. So looks like he's gonna cruise it down. Best he's gonna be doing is 22nd today for the young Swiss rider. 
but trying to throw everything he had into that first feature with the 720. Yeah, and that's got to be tough. It's, you know, we talk so much about the mental game for these riders. A bit disheartening when the first trick on the first feature doesn't go your way and you knew you had to put together your absolute dream run in order to move into that transfer top 15. So, you know, he's going to be able to regroup and, and these riders are young and they're versatile and they're mentally and physically strong. I guarantee we're going to see this young kid come back swinging at the next one. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to have another chance here in a couple, in a week's time to see if he can earn his way over to Joyride, but that is going to do it today for the young Swiss rider. Put your guys together one more time for Jan Hagman. Here we go, Cian going for that 720 onto the whale tail and just barely hanging up on the back of that landing. And again, the lip so tall on the landing, maybe not as steep as it could be. So the consequence of coming up even a few meters short, millimeters short can really mess up your whole run. Yeah, and you can see it ate up all his speed and then the the your head game is just thinking, am I even going fast enough to make it to the landing of the next one? So the idea of then tossing a big trick off it, it you know, it starts to lose some appeal pretty quickly. And the, the time frame they have to make that decision is so short because that whale tail's tight. So Caden Ingersoll, this young buck, 17th right now with a 66. And he had a clean run, but definitely looked like there were a couple spots where he could add to it. He is young and he is, uh, I mean, I just love... He said he's honored to be here. So it's such a, that's such a great, uh, great attitude for these young athletes to have to when they're riding amongst their heroes. There it is again with that big Superman seat grab. Backflip, one foot can, missing. Oh, wow, how he was able to survive that frame case on the step down. That is what is called 17-year-old ankles right there, Derek. Yeah, that was unbelievable. I mean, so front wheel on the good side, back wheel on the bad side, bike comes to a dead stop from way up in the air. And uh, uh, impressive that he just rode that out. His 17-year-old ankles, indeed. He's back on now, and he's, he's going to come off the flat drop with a 360. This guy is going to milk every single inch that he gets to ride this course for everything it's worth. Huge backflip tailwhip, folks. This is for the crowd. He knows he's not going to be able to make qualifying, so everything he's doing right now is just for you folks. The young 17-year-old out of Maine in the USA, Caden Ingersoll, in his first slope style, super styly. Put your hands together one more time. So that was unfortunate there, coming off the whale tail for her Caden Ingersoll. Really good super extension on the Superman seat grab there, and then just, you know, he got his pedal in, it almost looked like he lost a pedal, throwing the foot over, and then, I mean, that was <laughs> heinous. Absolutely heinous. Really glad, Caden, to see that you're all right and you didn't just snap both your legs in half. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's collecting his thoughts right now, but as he said earlier, he said he's honored to be here, he's stoked to be riding with some of his idols, and to be able to throw down on this massive title slope style course, and have, be able to survive a case pad like that, we're gonna see some good things from this kid in the future. I think so too. I think he's, uh, that's a name to look out for in the slope style world. And Caden, not his day today, but definitely proving that he belongs riding at this level. And that is exciting for all of us. So boom, straight back up we go. Ben Thompson with the 69, he is the man on the bubble. He's so, I think in an ideal world for Ben, okay. he puts himself in a higher position and gives himself a little bit of breathing space because he is the bubble boy currently. Yeah, and that's never a comfortable position, especially when you know there's plenty of heavy hitters to come. There we go, double whip up the whale tail. 360 double bar, almost missing the grab, but somehow getting it back underneath him. Backflip, bar spin to tuck no hander from Ben. Flat drop for Ben Thompson. Double truck down, getting the bars even that time into the super booter. Front flip, bar spin to tuck no hander and just barely under rotating that, almost able to pull it down, but it is not gonna be there for run number two. So right now, Ben Thompson is gonna have to sit as the bubble boy and watch to see if he's gonna be able to get another shot 
at this title slope style course tomorrow for finals. Yeah, hopefully he's all right after that. That was definitely a heavy slam. He got the hands off, got it around, and the snap was so close to coming around. Just landed in that manual. It was, it was millimeters difference between being able to get the front wheel down and then looping out as he did. So he is up and moving around. Hopefully he's going to be all right. Definitely going to be a bit battered and bruised. And unfortunately now for him, he's got a nail-biting couple, uh, couple of minutes or an hour maybe left in this slope style as he waits to see if anybody's going to be able to push him out of that 15th spot. So we are back up to the top. Of course, we just keep rolling, rolling, rolling on. Marcel Derbao, he's a rider out of Germany. Sorry, a rider out of Spain. And he's, he, I mean, he was just so pumped and kind of, intimidated by the size of the features on this course. He said he's a great dirt jump rider. He's ridden dirt jumps, but a slope style course and a crankwork okay, slope you. style course is, uh, is kind of like graduating to another planet. So we'll see where he ends up. He needs to be 69 even to move into 15th. Is he going to be able to do it with this run? Yeah, and he had a 64 on run number one, so he can definitely improve on that. There we go. Tail whip up, back flip, bar spin down. He's going to have to throw a couple extra combos. There we go. Flip whip on the step up. Landing a little case, but making it smooth. Rewinding the bars, getting that little couple of extra points. And here we go into that flat drop. This is one where riders really collecting their thoughts, making sure the speed is perfect. There we go. Truck driver off, improving on run number one into the super booter. Backflip Superman, getting the extension that time. Into the surgeon's table. 360 whip up, getting to pedals. 360 down, perfect. Marcel, he might be able to move into the top 15. One more jump to go. Cork seven and stumps it. Screaming across the line. Marcel Durbo, the young Spanish kid, first time on a slope style course, two top to bottoms and upping the ante. That is some veteran prowess out of the first timer. And he is feeling it right now. That run definitely had as the element, and you could see the relief come off him in just the raw stoke, landing that cork seven on that final jump, pedaling into it, giving it everything he's got. You can see how gassed he is in the finish area. This kid laid it all on the line, and he is looking to move into that spot. It's a lot to ask, but it definitely needs to be, he needs to move up three places. This run definitely had it all, and there were a couple moments where we weren't so sure, um, but spectacular run. Yeah, starting things off, kind of get, worming his way into the run with that tail whip, then into the backflip bar spin, and then we saw some great stuff. The 360 whip on to the surgeon's table, and then 360 down, and here, the cork seven on that finish, yanking for every amount of rotation and absolutely landing bolts perfect. He is stoked, and he only needs five points from his run number one score to move up into the top 15. This has got to be a nail biter. Yeah, he kind of has, he reminds me of a, another famous Spanish slope rider that we used to love to watch, the, the, just the vibrancy of is Andreo Lacondigui. He's got that same kind of, you know, just expression. We get so psyched after they finish their runs. And it's great to see the Spanish crew back in the mix here at the Crankworx slope style and at this level. So now he's just heart pounding, waiting to see what the judges are going to do with that. Definitely there was, uh, you know, there was a lot in that run that they're going to like. Is it going to be enough? It's hard with the comparison. You know, the judge is really trying more to compare to the criteria than to compare run to run. And that way the numbers, they mean what they mean, and, and you're just trying to match or, or beat the criteria that you're out for. But right now we're looking at our, uh, our standings, and Nikolai Rogakin, the only man in the 90s, I think we're safe to say that we're not going to see our, our young German rider, Marcel Dubat, move into the 90s with that run. But is it going to be enough to put him in the top 15? Anxious moments for sure here. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is a tough one for these judges because it's not only a points criteria, but it also is a where they slot in the order. You know, is that a run that's better than a top 15? Or is it a run that's better than a 69? We're going to find out. It is an improvement on his score. What is it with there? 67-6-6. So Marcel moving into 17th position. Not quite enough to push him into the top 15. 
and uh, you know you can just see the look on his face, the acceptance. It is, uh, you know, it's one of the hardest parts. You put your whole, your whole self out there, and you put your 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 bones on the line on the slope style course, and then it's just not quite enough. But again, some of these riders are very young and they're brand new to this. So to be totally honest, in a in a course this big, the 17th spot is a really strong finish for a young athlete, and I think we're going to see a lot of these guys really moving up. This is another one. Our Austrian rider Dor. Dorian Macher, 33.66. So that was not a clean run. That was a, a crash run on run Let's number one. He, yeah, he says, "Let's go again." As he drops in, he's going to be looking for a big improvement on his first run. Yeah, he's he's going to be looking to kind of throw down a banger. He knows what needs to happen. Backflip, tuck no hander on, getting that wheel down, tuck no hander to bar spin off. Still not getting the extension he wants, but he knows he's only got so much time landing off that step down feature, and then flip whip into the step up. There he is, collecting his thoughts. Knock on wood in to this flat drop. Truck driver down the flat drop. Here we go into the super booter, sprinting everything he's got. Double flip, stomps at that time. No over rotation. He did that exhale, and it's what he needed. Tail whip up the surgeon's table. Opposite 360 down. Little bit penciled out, but getting it clean, and then into the finish line. What does he have? Front flip from the Austrian, going deep but rolling out. Well, Dorian Macha there making a case for himself to ride tomorrow in the title slope style finals. He definitely had a massive improvement. That double backflip that he over rotated on run number one came down to bolts on that one. Super clean. And then we got to see the rest of his run, which we didn't get to see on the first one. That big front flip uh, moving a little bit right, uh, left to right there on that finish jump. But he is hyped, hugging uh, you know the compatriots there at the bottom. We're going to see what the judges have to say about that. I mean, in terms of degree of difficulty, double backflips way up there. Yeah, that is uh, that was a trick just a few short years ago that could pretty much guarantee you a podium finish at a slope style competition. And now we're seeing it in qualifying day one from riders that are on the outside looking in. So this is uh, just a testament to the level of all of these riders and how much work they've put in over these past few seasons. But the Austrian right now, we'll take a look at some of his replay. Here's the double backflip just almost perfect both wheels at the same time landing just almost at the very top of the landing then into the surgeon's table the tail whip up so anytime you leave your feet leave pedals going on to one of these whale tail features you run the risk of not getting them right in place and then at that point you're a passenger hoping that you can make it off the drop safely but Dorian able to catch pedals and then still get that 360 off the surgeon's table and then into that big kind of corked out front flip traveling a little bit side to side but making it work for him and stomping the landing now yeah. it's now he's just enjoying the spoils of being a slope style rider of uh signing jerseys for all the kids in the finish area the fans out here at silver star vernon's really turned it on a lot of uh, a lot of locals come up for it so dorian matcher 68 6, 6 that's 16th spot for him so it is not going to be enough to bump him into finals but you can see he's just enjoying the ride so 16th place the the differences are so infinitesimal at this level and the judges you know they they want to see perfection so we're going back up to the top now here's a man who could have a real say in in that top 15 shakeup mike ross with a pretty big crash going for the cash roll off the flat drop in the first run Aussie rider, 30 years old. He put down a world's first with that flat drop. Cashy, is he gonna is he gonna toss it again, or is he gonna try and put himself into finals with something that he knows he can land? Well, we're about to see. So there we see the front flip on, going a bit deep, doing a toboggan to the table off. So now he knows he's got to really throw down some bangers. Cash roll on the step up, getting it around nice and smooth. So here's where the crux of Mike Ross's run comes in. Flat backflip off of the flat drop into the super booter. Double backflip, just barely missing pedals. So let's see if he can clean things up. Cannonball up, what does he have? Flat drop flip down, so choosing not to do the cash roll. Wants to see if he can make it into finals. Let's see what this final jump's gonna be. There it is, Superman front flip to tuck no enter and doesn't quite get the rotation around. Unfortunate disaster for Mike Ross, but 
battling through injury for two runs, trying his best to make it into the finals. The young Aussie, put your hands together still for the world's first cash roll flat drop in practice and then trying to throw down here, Mike Ross. Man, just a tough break. I mean, the Superman tuck no hander front flip and then throwing the bars. Like, there's so much going on there at the at, on that final jump that it looked like even with some of those mistakes, the degree of difficulty in the rest of the run may well have been high enough to lock him in it's somewhere in the top 15 because the ones that he did get, I mean, look at that. He goes for the Superman, then throwing the hands at the end. There's so much going on, but just not quite able to bring it around. Unfortunate for Mike Ross. I don't know anybody else who's doing that trick right now. Yeah, I don't know anybody on a mountain bike who would think to do that trick. That seems like something that you need the stability of a motorcycle to grab onto on the way back. But Mike Ross really bursting his way on to the, the crankwork scene in Austria. You know, as we mentioned earlier, two of his close Australian friends at home, Caroline Buchanan and uh, her boyfriend Prudy, the moto rider, training a bunch together, convincing him to quit his day job as an electrician and chase his dream of being a Crankworx World Tour athlete. So this is not the last time we're going to see the young Austra or the Australian rider. Yeah, no doubt. And I know if he's able to put one of those runs down, we are going to be losing our minds. But we straight back up here. Swedish rider, Lucas Skjold, 71.33. He's in 10th. He's looking pretty good as a lot of the riders who are below him on the list are, uh, are actually sitting above him in the rankings right now. So he doesn't have to worry about them. The Swedish rider on course and looking to stamp himself a ticket into tomorrow. Backflip bar up. Nice 360. So he knows, I think, that he's in that comfortable 10th place position, and the riders ahead of him on the start list are not going to knock him back. So he's comfortable into the final tomorrow. So this is a bit of a practice run, I think, for Lucas. Maybe getting, to, getting his body used to doing two runs, because I remember him before the event started asking some of his fellow riders up top how tired they were from sprinting through these last jumps, and he said he was absolutely gassed. So maybe this using it a bit of a training run. There we go, nice 360 down, and one more jump to go for Lucas, but he's gonna be sitting on that run number one score, putting him in 10th. Yeah, throwing the bars there on that backflip on the finish jump, and he knows he's in a pretty comfortable spot. He's happy, and we saw the emotion just absolutely pour out of him after run number one, kind of looking like we've seen uh, his his countryman, Emil Johansson, look at some of the, those relieved finishing uh, finish line moments. So he's done. He's, he's in the top 10 right now. He needs to be in the top 15. Probably, I'm going to say, done enough to, to get himself there right now, so he's looking pretty happy. And uh, that score, not going to bother anything. It's not going to be his counting score, 43-6-6. 71-3-3, that's his first run score, and that's the one that's going to count for today for, uh, for the Swedish rider. And we keep on moving on. Yeah, and so the next rider on our lift was going to be the other Swede, Elof Lind, but he's choosing not to do his second... He's choosing not to do his second run, so the next rider going to be dropping in is going to be the Brit, Sam Pilgrim. And he's... Almost in that bubble boy position right there, 14th. Yeah, so Sam Pilgrim is in for finals, and we know he had a, a full trick that he just didn't execute at all on run number one. So he's going to probably try to just clean it up and get his full run. But he is in. Whether he's in comfortably, we're not sure. Backflip whip to table, and then a backflip tuck no-hander from Pilgrim. Again, that's such dominant style when he lands. And 360 whip to table. Just absolutely stomping the landing again from the British rider. Here we go, slashing down into the flat drop. 360X down now here into the super booter. This was the trick that got away from him on run number one. Oh no, choosing to switch it up and go for the cork seven. Didn't quite get the pop and snap off the lip. So trying to squeak that last rotation around and last minute realizing he's not going to have it and kicking the bike away. 
He was rotating so slowly there. Sam Pilgrim looking like uh, hopefully he's all right. He threw that and then just right about there you could see he knew he wasn't getting all the way around. Definitely looked like his legs were a bit twisted up in uh, in his bike and they were not sure. Hopefully he's all right. That definitely looked like a heavy hit for Sam Pilgrim. I would put him in uh, high on my list of toughest men in mountain biking. So uh, hopefully he's going to be all right for tomorrow and, and we'll see if he's able to hold on to that top spot in 14th. So currently he does have a ticket into finals tomorrow. Uh, hopefully he's going to be all right to take that ticket and, and we get to see Sam Pilgrim riding again on this course because it's a real pleasure to see him back in the slope style mix here at Crankworks Summer Series at Silver Star. Yeah, he's definitely going to be trying to find some of those uh, nice Silver Star glacial runoff lakes to soak that body in before finals tomorrow if he's able to hold on in that 14th position right now. Still a few riders left on the list that could possibly sneak him out of that spot. I know Alex Alenko is one of those that could maybe move it, but looking down our list, not too many riders left that are outside looking in, so we may see some riders choose not to take their second run. Yeah, definitely some interesting strategy coming into play. We've seen a few riders opting out. We've seen a bunch of riders just taking a, a cruisy run because they know they're comfortable and, and we'll see where we go with the rest of the field. You know, some of these riders we're looking at our qualifying standings right now are well in. They don't really have to if they don't want to, I guess. And it is the, the delicate balance of risk versus reward. If you're already into finals and you know, you know that you're, you're going to be sweet to, to make it, do you risk another run or is it valuable enough for the practice and for the experience that you gain on course to to put that run in so we'll see what the riders opt to do there's a lot of a lot of different options and there's definitely a lot of different ways of looking at it so each of them has to make their own decision on that one um, so you know we, we've got a, just an incredible scene going on here the the folks at um, at trail forks hooking up they've been throwing down all of the maps and everything for all the courses that have been raced on here at the Silver Star Bike, La uh, bike Park. Sorry. And uh, we're just pretty excited to see all of the sponsors going on uh, here in the bike park at Silver Star. Yeah, so just getting word from our timing and scoring crew that the next rider to drop in is going to be the Swede, Alex Alenko. He's on the outside looking in after that bobble in run number one. And so he's going to try and stamp his ticket in to the finals for tomorrow. So that 55-66, 25th on run one. But we've seen this rider on the podium at the Slope Style World Championship Tour in Rotorua just a few short years ago. And he has been trying hard to get himself back to that level. Let's see if this is the first step in that journey. Yeah, Alex Alenko is a heavy hitter of the slope style world. And we've watched his journey, like you said, from the podium. And then he's had a few results where things didn't quite go his way. Runs that were three quarters podium runs that just, you know, I mean, it only takes one little slip up on any of these runs and things can go can yeah. go haywire for you. So he only needs a 69. Now I say only, that's still a great score at Slopestyle, but Alex Alanco is well capable of that if he gets the run he's looking for here. Yep, there we go, backflip bar spin up. Good transition that time, 360 double bar out. Very slow rotation, very styly into the step up. 360 whip, the opposite direction there. There, he's getting some some cheers on from the crowd. He can hear you cruising into this flat drop, collecting his thoughts. What's he gonna do here? There we go, opposite 360 in. Very technical high scoring. Nice, cork seven, a little bit of a case, but able to still roll through it. High degree of difficulty onto the surgeon's table, tail whip up. Truck driver down. He got it around, one more jumps to go for Alex Alenko. Can he make the finals? Oh no, going for that cork seven and it didn't get this pop that he needed. It was not coming around right off the get go, having to ditch out. But he's walking away safe. So folks, put your hands together. Alex Alenko, unfortunately, not gonna make our final here. 
And that run, Mikey, had all the elements. It was another one of those that we've seen from Alex Solanko a couple times in recent years where we are watching a run, a high-level run that's going to place well, and then it just comes apart. I mean, so much difficulty. The, the combo tricks, spinning both ways. He's looking so strong, the Swedish rider. I mean, he is a master of slope style. And unfortunately, just at the end, not quite able to get it around there. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, he's, you can tell right there, he's... A little bit bummed, but he's got his fellow countrymen there, Lucas there, to commiserate with him a bit. So 25th, the best he's going to do. He's going to go ahead and shake things off and hopefully earn a spot next weekend and get himself back to the big show and hopefully back to the podium that he's thirsty for. All right, so we're heading back up, Lucas Hooper. So we are seeing a few of the riders opting not to take run number two. Tom Ice did one of those guys. So Lucas Hooper, the Swiss rider, is in the gate. He's sitting in fourth right now on an 82-point run. He did sit in the hot seat uh, momentarily on the first run, and he is back. Lucas Hooper, he feels like he's kind of uncovered another page in his slopestyle career, and it's looking great. Yeah, he definitely put in a ton of work and really wanted to solidify his spot at the top end of the slope style world championship tour so but choosing to take this one is a bit of a cruisy practice run you know these tricks maybe would have been in hoopy's final run three to four years ago but this is definitely just there we go there was a good one <laughs> the 360 et to look over and then big dump three to boggin hoopy is actually having a blast on this run Nice little bar spin up, 360X down, a super slow, lazy rotation. You can tell he's very comfortable on this track. There it is again, another dump three, kind of one foot stanky leg, if you will. The Swiss rider, Hoopy, putting down two good ones, and he's gonna be comfortably in the finals for tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see who be riding tomorrow and uh, vying for those for those spots in, well, he's actually already qualified for, for a joyride, so wherever he finishes up, it's not gonna affect that joyride wildcard, but definitely great for, yeah, for him for some prize money, for some fame, for some autograph signing, and for laps on the title slope style course, which a lot of the riders honestly are, have come here just for that, because they love riding this course, and they love riding slope style. You know, the next two riders up in the the, uh, in the start gate, whether they opt to take their runs or not, they're a lot of the time doing it for the passion, for the joy, for the riding, and for the fans. And uh, you can see Luke, uh, Lucas Hooper just loving it, hanging out with all the kids in the finish area, all getting their autographs and just enjoying that contact with the rock stars of the sport. Yeah, and that's what I do love so much about Crankworks and especially the Summer Series, that it really brings this world tour rock star attitude and life and kind of event to the grassroots local backyard event locations here like Silver Star. Um, you know, we'll be moving over across the country to Quebec for the summer series later in the, the season, but you know, that's not to go, not before we go to the original birthplace of Crankworks, the Slope Style Super Bowl. And I don't know about you, but I don't think I've been more excited to go back after such a long hiatus to the home of this amazing world tour yeah it's been a while and we're really just uh, even right here at silver star just so excited to have the fans back on site it's such a great part of it it's it's maybe one of the most important parts for everybody and why crankworks is so world renowned is the fans get to be on site and get the contact with the riders in a way that no other sport offers there's there's the you know you can just see it with the kids kind of rallying around these um these superstars of the sport they absolutely love it. So we're back up at the top, and we have David Godziak. He is sitting on 88 points after run number one. Big smile to the camera as he takes off for his second run of two. I mean, he can only improve by two points if he wants to, but I think he's just going to enjoy this run for himself. But he's already up in the ante there with the backflip tuck, but then into instead of just the 360 tuck no-hander, 360 tuck to bar spin, and then instead of just a 360 whip, the 360 double whip. So David choosing to up the ante, even though it's not really to his advantage to do so today, maybe just deciding, oh my goodness, folks. We just saw a half cab off of the flat drop and then straight into a twister. David Godziak, did anybody tell this guy that finals are tomorrow? 180 up to tail whip down. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a qualifying run. And a cash roll bar spin again from David Godziak. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, you just witnessed a practice run that should be a gold medal run any other day. Wow. David Godziak had the opportunity to do a victory lap. He was comfortably into qual or through qualifying into finals, and he just did two things that we've barely ever seen. I mean, the half cab we've seen a couple of times. I can't remember anybody going on to an on-off feature and jumping on switch with a 180 in any slope style. So absolutely spectacular from David Godziak and proving that the competitive beast burns inside this guy. He was sitting in second. It wasn't enough. Can he up it and get himself over 90 points to put himself in the lead of, as you said, qualifying day. <laughs> this is qualifying day, and David Godziak is here to play. He just came out with a roar, tossing the bars on a cash roll over the final jump. Picture perfect, letter perfect, top to bottom. David Godziak, he's here to play. He needs to get over 90 points. He had 88 points that... Numbers are coming in 92-3-3. David Godziak putting himself into first place here on the qualifying day at the Title Slope Style Crankwork Summer Series with a couple of things that I honestly did not think we were going to see in competition today. That was a spectacular second run here from the Polish rider, and he has shown the beast burns inside him. Man, there is, there is nothing that can be said about that run other than wow. And to be able to do those half cab tricks, not choosing to ride what's called a Z coaster, a, a bike or a rear hub that actually allows you to coast backwards. He's having to backpedal while rolling backwards, knowing that he has to drop at least 10 feet. But let's just leave that one alone for a moment and look right back up the hill, Derek. Nikolai Rogakin, he is a legend in the sport. He is a fan favorite. The fans yeah. love him, the kids love him, the other riders love him. He's the biggest hype man for the rest of the riders on tour. There's nobody who cheers harder, including all the fans, for everybody than Nikolai. Big cash roll on and the backflip off, mirroring run number one, but even cleaner on run number two for Nikolai. Double whip, even smooth. Again, just cleaning everything up. We've seen that over the last couple of years from Nikolai, just cleaning up all of his massive rotations and spin, making them extra smooth. There we go, fast plant 360 again off the flat drop, sprinting into the super booter. And a perfect twister, even more clean. Again, Nikolai just upping the ante so much smoother. Flip up, tail whip down, perfect to pedals again. One more hit to go for Nikolai. Cash roll, tail whip, and oh, just barely missing it on the landing. That front side 720 with the tail whip. He's already smiles. He, was he even on the ground, Derek? I, I mean, that was he was up and down so quickly. That's a trick that nobody else does. And you could see Nikolai just tossing that tail whip inside the cash roll. There's so little time within that trick to actually add anything to it. Godziak does a bar spin in there, and that seems like it's incredible to fit it in. To fit a tail whip in the cash roll, I, I mean, it's just incredible. Not quite able to get it around there for Nikolai, but you see the intent there. You see what, you know, he's... he's put the cards on the table, he's bared his teeth, but the rest of that run for Nikolai Rogakin so clean, and we are witnessing uh, an evolution of Rogakin as he's adding combo tricks, he's adding oppo tricks, he's really upping his game, and when you got David Godziak going switch onto up-down features, you have to do it. So Nikolai Rogakin, that wasn't exactly what he was going for, but we are in qualifying day, and these top dogs are adding stuff in to their runs, such as we have never seen in Slopestyle. I am just so impressed with the level that we saw at the title Slopestyle today. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of unbelievable that this was just qualifying day. And we've got a whole nother day of the top 15 riders to throw down again, clean up their runs. They've seen what the other riders have in store for them. And so now it's really a, kind of that chess match. Do we throw everything on the table? Do I up the ante? Do I play it safe? They've got a whole 24 hours to think about it before we come back tomorrow. Yeah, so exciting. And, and for, for these riders to, to, I mean, how can they possibly up what they did today? But I can't <laughs> wait to see it.
Well, what a show we just had. The Silver Star Crankworx Summer Series stop. It's the title slope style track. The riders love it. The fans love it. Mikey, I loved it. Final thoughts on today. Oh, man. Uh, let's just say today was mind-blowing to know that it was day one and that we have so much more to come tomorrow. And it was actually pretty amazing to see some of these young riders that we'd never heard of before really throw down on a level that I personally was never going to be expecting. And, and to see some of them even make it through and best some of the world's best. It's going to be an exciting couple weeks here for the Slope Style World Tour. Oh, yeah. Slope Style is on fire. So let's see where we ended up today uh, with our final results. This was only qualifier day. We had 28 riders drop in. David Godziak bringing it home at the end with uh, basically things we've never seen before. Nikolai Rogakin and Chance Moore putting himself into third place. Is this going to be our breakout star? I mean, I know it's early to say that, but man, it's I like the chances. Yeah, I, I see what you did there, Derek. And then we've got some, you know, names we've seen before. Marcel Hunt, David Lee back into slope style competition. Good to see him in the finals. Liam Bayless, another young Canadian. Burnt Winkler showing why he's on the world tour. Sam Pilgrim making it in. And then by the skin of his teeth, the local boy, Ben Thompson, able yeah. to hold on. And we're going to be seeing him drop in first tomorrow. By 0.4 of a point, Ben Thompson put himself into tomorrow. So that's really exciting. There's a few a few young guns that we're, we're looking to see. Can they raise the bar tomorrow? Are they going to go to bed and think about what we saw Godziak and Rogat can do at the end of, of run number two and even in run number one? And then unfortunately, you know, as we look down the, the list, these are the riders that are not moving forward into, uh, into finals tomorrow, but everybody really showing they belong at this level. And I got to say, just riding this course is a feat in and of itself. Yeah, especially considering, you know, this is not an invite event. This is something that riders can be, you know, sign up for. And obviously they do have to have some FMB ranking and pre-qualifying. But, you know, to have this depth of field and have so many top riders not make the cut, it shows just how the level of slope style has increased over the last couple seasons. All right. Well, we are done in competition here at the Crankworx Summer Series at Silver Star. Qualifying day done and dusted. David Godziak, Nikolai Rogak, and Chance Moore, that is your top three. We are moving on to finals where 15 athletes are going to put it all on the line for a spot at Red Bull Joyride in Whistler. On behalf of the whole Crankworx team, Mikey Hatterer, thanks for joining me. We'd like to thank you guys all for joining us. And please come back here tomorrow, and we're going to do it all again. <laughs>